Hi, this is Glenn with uh, Crimson Lotus Tea. This is Between Two Teapots, and our guest today, or this morning over there, is uh, uh, Marshall Ann. Lawrence, how are you doing? Good Hello. morning. How are you? Good morning. Well, good after good evening, chat. Yeah, it's evening for us. Yeah, morning for you. Yeah. It's a fun little uh, time zone that we managed to uh, manage to uh, to find for both of us. So <laughs> this is uh, this is awesome. I'm really excited. Um, Actually, I'm super excited to have you on this uh, this this chat. It's a uh, it's a big big honor. We got a lot of respect for you, and I think a lot of people in the chat um, do as well. There's um, already uh, already more than uh, 50 people tuned in, ready yeah. to ready to watch us uh, have a little tea. Um, yeah, watching two guys drink tea. What what more <laughs> fun can there be? Exactly. It was a lot of fun. A lot of fun last week with the uh, the with the one with uh, with with Liquid Proust. Um, anybody in the chat, if the audio is off in any way, if, uh, if, uh, I'm too loud or if, uh, Lawrence is too quiet, just, uh, let me know. Um, we did do a test uh, last week, tried to get all the levels and stuff just set up perfectly. So, um, hopefully it's all, it's all good. Um, so yeah, we, uh, we, we mailed you some of our tea and some of, uh, it's a 2003, uh, Chong Thai Memorial. It's, uh, you know, about 15, 18, 18 years old now. Yeah. So, um, I thought, uh, I thought that might be in the, uh, in the, in the age range that, that you prefer. We did. We talked about that. You, uh, you mentioned an interesting thing that you, uh, you noticed on the wrapper that, um, it was using, uh, a phrase for Chong Thai Corporation that uh, did not exist until 2005. So this material yeah. is m likely 2003, but was most likely also pressed in 2005, which I thought was yeah. uh, pretty interesting. So yeah. good little uh, little little background note that I didn't uh, I wasn't uh, aware of myself. So we've already uh, we've already learned something. So um, yeah. So uh, this is the uh, this is the teapot that I'm going to be uh, using. So this is actually an American uh, American potter named Mark Moeller uh, Sanguine Teapots. And this is made from uh, uh, some Georgia clay, a blend of stuff from uh, Lizella and other places in Georgia, made in Georgia, and then wood fired in Georgia. So I'm uh, I'm super excited about that. What do you? Uh, Georgia clay. Georgia clay. I know. Very what do you? Interesting. It is. It's very interesting. I'm pretty. I'm super excited about it. Um, what do you? Uh, what do you got? Uh, a uh, chilun that I bought. Um, I don't know. I want to say seven, eight years ago. Um, I don't know how well you guys can see this. Um, yeah, it's your typical Julian Zhu. It's probably old. Um, I don't know exactly how old. If if people are selling it, they'll tell you this is Republican or Lei Qing or whatever. But you know, it's it's big. Um, it's a little bigger. Yeah, uh, it, it gives the tea a little more room to run around in, and uh, for this kind of stuff, it works. So you know. I kind of like I kind of like that. I like to have the give the tea a little bit of a little bit of space. So it's about 150 ml somewhere somewhere around there. Or is it a little smaller? Than I, that? Yeah, I don't measure my pots, but probably really something okay. Like that. Yeah, yeah. I um yeah. um yeah. A lot of our customers get pretty uh, pretty particular about like exactly like how many ml they want. So I try to find uh, oh yeah, find I know. Pretty uh, pretty precise. Um, but then, but then, when do you measure to? Do you measure it up to the lid? Or do you measure I'll, well, I measure I measure it to the and I I, um, I I I put this on the website so people know exactly like how how I measure it too. So um, I, I fill I fill water up to the top and then I drop the lid in. So it's exactly the amount of water that would be in the pot with the lid on. And then I mean, obviously, as soon as you put more tea in there, it's going to you know remove some of that volume. But that's the that's what I would call a hundred and fifty ml pot is. You know, with with the lid on, no water, no water leaking out. So um, uh, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, that's me. And then for the for the gaiwan, I measure it to where the gaiwan lid meets the uh, the rim. So that's um, that's how I that's how I do it. So okay, up to the um, rim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. And, yeah, because you never actually pour it up to the. To you the never rim, you never pour it up to the top. Or you'd burn yeah, your fingers. Yeah, unless you have a death wish. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm in the the teacup. I'm going to be using this is a uh, this is actually from Huaning. Huaning is near um um. Jenshui. It's about an hour and a half north of Jenshui, okay. and they've got a pretty interesting uh, ceramics history. Mostly just you know standard, you know like roofing tiles and bowls and stuff like that. But they've got some <laughs> ants. You know they've got a really old dragon kiln. I mean old by by their standards, I guess. It's uh, less than a hundred years old, maybe older than fifty or something like that. Um, but they still do uh, some teaware in the uh, the old dragon kiln sometimes. But this was um, um, this is actually a clay that they've got local to the area that's uh, naturally iron rich. It's a really black really black clay yeah. and then they actually wood fire these and um i love it it's like easily easily my uh easily my favorite cup hmm. i it? i i mean i don't know um the cup i'm using is just some japanese old porcelain club it looks cup. nice though um, yeah it's nice uh, i i like this kind of shape and size 
So you were saying most of your teaware is not uh, is not not with you now. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm. I. I. This is my what we are dealing with uh, during the pandemic for yeah. home office purposes. Uh, so that's that's yeah. The other stuff is uh, sitting in either my tea is off site somewhere, and uh, my my wares are at home. Yeah. So it's, it, there's there's nothing you can do about it. Uh, yeah. this, this year being what it is. So. Yeah. It's a real mess. Yeah. I'm sure you've got a. Uh, I'm sure you have an interesting collection of uh, stuff. You should you should post well, uh, post as, more pictures of your teaware and stuff sometimes. As we were talking about just before we started, you yeah, know, having kid having kids really um <laughs> really uh puts a damper on things. Uh, with a, with a kid running around, you don't want to have teaware lying around, and uh, and it's yeah, it gets challenging, right? Did, yeah, have, have your kids broken anything yet? So. Thankfully, my kids have been pretty good. Um, and honestly, I, I've, well, I've got this tea table here that kind of sits between like where I keep all the teaware. And so the kids kind of know like that's the wall. And um, <laughs> they, um, they've got their own teaware that we let them play with, just some simple porcelain ah, cups. And yes, um, yes. like a lot of the, um, I let them play around with a lot of the educational pots <laughs> that I learned on when I was first getting started, you know, like a lot of beginner oh, pots okay. and things like that. And um um, Gary broke one the other day, but like, I didn't really stress it cause it really wasn't, you know, yep. it wasn't, wasn't, wasn't worth, um, wasn't worth me uh, stressing over, but, uh, he and Gemma, uh, like to sit down and, um, do little, uh, tea tastings with each other and stuff. And, uh, Gary gets, wait, do they actually drink tea? Um, we just let them, ha we just let them pour water back and forth. You oh, know? Okay, okay, I, um, okay. I'll okay. give them a little bit of something, but it's usually, it's usually watered, watered down. You know, like they'll come here and sit with me and I'll have like a cup of cool water and I'll put like a little bit of tea in there and then pour it in with, pour it in some water and then they can feel like they're, you know, kind of like part of, part of it and, you know, having fun with us. But, um, oh, okay. I, I'm a complete hypocrite. I don't let my kids drink tea, not yet anyway. So it's, I feel it's a little too early. So it's, um, no, I, 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 I totally understand the, from a, the one, one time I, I took my daughter and she was like two. Yeah. The tea shop in Taiwan, and yeah. I was, I was buying some tea, and we gave her like a super watered down cup, yeah, to drink or two. And uh, before you know it, she was up at eleven thirty, and didn't want to go to bed. And eleven thirty at night, she was still up, and she didn't want to go to bed. And we were like, ah, go to bed, please, <laughs> so we can all sleep. <laughs> but uh, yeah. So that's... yeah, the caffeine super affected her. Um, so yeah, yeah exactly. on, um uh when we were in uh Jing Mai the first year with uh, uh Gemma Gemma was um about a year and a half old and she was on um either my back or, or Lamu's back we were kind of carrying her through we were going through one of the uh, the tea gardens and we didn't realize that the whole time she'd just been reaching there and pulling leaves off the tree and just like eating them like the whole time we're going through the garden she was just like pulling them <laughs> off and those things are so bitter like those are really really bitter and she just she still to this day she'll come over and sometimes she doesn't even want to like try the tea. She just wants to grab a leaf out of the gaiwan and just start munching on it. And so I'm like, all right, cool. Here, that's, that's here have a here have a leaf. That's, so. Well, that's one way to that's one way to get caffeine. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was yeah probably yeah pretty pretty concentrated. Um, uh, what is your uh, rough rough brewing ratio? What do you normally go with for um, leaf to water? Uh. I can't tell you because oh that's right because you don't measure I'm, your I'm, pots, I'm right? one of these guys who don't measure anything so um, I just look around and it seems about right uh, for something like this uh, so I've 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 tried this once before we, we we're drinking today right so, right because I know what because I, I, so I know I'm I, pre I appreciate um, that yeah because yeah, because you don't want to get surprised right. um, and uh, so there, there's a few chunks there's probably like ten grams couple chunks. Yeah, I dropped in a I dropped in a nice little ten gram ten gram chunk into into mine. It's yeah. um these ones weren't weren't too heavily compressed, but it'll still take a little time to uh, but but uh, but I, I I usually break it up a little smaller than that. So uh, yeah, like, like, oh, okay. Smaller. So if you take a big chunk, you pre-break it up and things like yeah, that. You, you, yeah, you you you. Uh, it's more even that way, I find. And, that makes uh, that makes you sense. Get a, Better, you get it, especially with tour, right? Which is pretty hard, right? Um, uh, if you don't do that, sometimes even after three, four infusions, you know, the outside is already all brewed up, and then the inside is the still inside kind is of, just still kind of yeah, makes it's still sense. kind of there, and you're like, um, your, your cup comes out funny. So makes um, sense. Yeah, makes sense. Um, yeah, sometimes I guess I go I go either way. If if I want the if I want to have a session that I feel stretches out a little bit longer, then I'll leave it, I'll leave it 
chunky and let it kind of work itself out. But right. sometimes I'll just right. break but it I up. I guess it depends on what depends on what you're looking for. Yeah. True. True. Yeah. So um, you know, I mean, a lot of the a lot of people in the chat are super super familiar with you, but I'm sure there's some people that uh, aren't. They're uh, they're new to tea. What is your um, what is your what is your your history with with tea? Oh, that's a good question, actually. Um, so, hmm, where do I start? <laughs> so, um, the the one thing I'm sort of proud of um, is uh, popularizing the term grandpa style, um, where you know you brew tea. You know, I think now when I say you know you brew tea grandpa style, people know what you're talking about. But back then, when I started using it, people didn't. Yeah. So is that, did you, and, did you um, actually coin that term? Yeah, 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 yeah. Great, I think that's I awesome. Anyway. I, don't, I, don't, I don't think you can find many references to it before when I, when I started using it. Yeah, it's a, it's, a term that, it's a term that we use all the time. That's how Lama's yeah, grandpa brews tea, so. <laughs> yeah, and, and yeah. That, there's a reason I use that term is because that's how grandpas brew tea. And that was precisely, it was my grandpa who brews tea like that. Well, who used to brew tea like that. Uh, he's passed away now. But um, uh, we are from, uh, near Shanghai, my family. Okay. So um, green tea is what we drink, or traditionally. Yeah. And so my grandpa would always have a cup of tea um, on his table, and it's always green tea, usually Longjing or something like that. And he would actually go a whole day and just drink tea all day long, and not water, not you know anything else. Yeah. He just adds water to it when he feels like it. That's, and, um, that's exactly Lama's grandpa as well. And, Generally and Longjing. Yeah. yeah, and if it gets weak, he'll add more tea to it. You know, So it's not like there's any sort of science behind it. You know? yeah. it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not measured. It's not anything. And so you know, uh, I was exposed to tea that way, right, um, in the family. And of course, living in Hong Kong, you, 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 the tea is everywhere. Um, but I... I actually didn't really get that interested into tea until one time, this is during college in my freshman year, I remember visiting New York City uh, with some friends. And <laughs> of all places, I was in, a, what, there used to be a store on Canal and Broadway called Great Wall. Okay. The older folks um, from New York City would know this. They'll remember it. Um, and and it's it, that place is dead now. Um, and uh, and it's like one of these Chinese supermarket type place. And I remember just kind of walking around with my friend after having some dim sum. Because, you know, there was no good dim sum where we were. Um, and uh, there was this rows of tea jars that they were selling. And there was different, I was thinking of maybe buying some Longjing because I ran out of Longjing. I, back then I drink green tea. Um, and I was like, wait a second, what is this? And there was this one jar that they sort of put off to the side a little bit. And it's like this special Ming Qian Longjing, you know, from just fresh off the plane or something like that. All right. And it's like 10 times the price of what I was going to buy. And I was like, Looked at it. I was like, oh, you know what? I'll, I'll give it a try. Picture and, curiosity. Uh, yeah. So I bought a couple of different grades, including some of that really expensive stuff. And before you know it, I took it back and I brewed it in my room, in my dorm room. And I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and that sort of sent me down the rabbit hole, you know, uh, just kind of like, well, why is this so much better than the other stuff? You know, even though it costs more. And and yeah, so when I came back to Hong Kong during the holidays and whatever, I would go to tea shops and go hang out. And and then you meet people who've been drinking tea for 20, 30 years and, and they'll tell you stuff and they'll teach you stuff and they'll bring stuff to you to try. This is back in the day, okay, when this is in like the late 90s, right? Yeah. Uh, when, uh, when people would just randomly bring like a piece of Hong Ying or Red Label. Um, just randomly, yeah. From the 50s and just like, yeah, let's have some today. And everyone's like, cool, you know, it wasn't a big deal. Back then it was expensive, but it wasn't this expensive. Back then, one cake was like 7,000 US, 8,000 US, something okay. like that. I mean, 
you can find like new stuff that costs that much these days. Um, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and you know, now one cake of those is like a million RMB, right? So That's crazy, man. You're, you're talking 20 times, something like that. So yeah, back then people would just literally brew something like that. And so I learned a lot from those people. And, and, and after, after a few years, you know, started drinking tea pretty seriously. Well, a lot of those teas, I mean, it's, it's, um, it, it, you know, I've, I've met tea shop owners that have similar stuff like that. And for them, just having it sit on their shelf doesn't really mean anything. I mean, like the act of sharing it is actually part of, in their experience, like the part of um, maybe even just some sort of a level of responsibility on, on the ownership. They're happy to, because sharing it creates a, a memory tied with that cake, or at least that's how I've, uh, yeah. that's how I've, that's how I've seen it. Um, some, I mean, some of the stuff, once it gets to be so expensive, it's, it's almost unsellable anyways, you know, unless it's just. Like it's so expensive it's not really and and if you only have one you, you can't you can't really sell it right that's the yeah thing, right? yeah it's yeah it's not like you know you have a million dollars in your pocket if you've got one of those on your shelf you know it's um yeah 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 um, and you could but people generally would prefer to just leave it there so people can tell you have one of these things. right and that's, for a while that's true when when it was um cheaper uh back in the day when it was like 100 grand hong kong so like 10, 10, 15 US, thousand US dollars. Uh, lots of new tea shops getting into the business would go out of their way to find one. Right. Um, so they have something to stick on their shelf uh, to show everyone, you know. Show everyone how. Old, old, fancy, expensive tea. Yeah. People don't do that anymore. No. <laughs> yeah, because it's pretty expensive to start a shop, you know, like already minus a million dollars. Um, exactly yeah. you don't need to you don't need to be down an extra million just for that yeah so so, so you uh yeah so you definitely got a lot of uh, a lot of awesome local hong kong experience how long um how long have people actually been aging is i mean as far as like aging tea is jumping from you know like longjing and stuff into Pu'er. like how long have people been aging things in in hong kong itself f- from your research uh for for a long time actually uh so at least in the po- since the post-war period. Okay. Um, because, and there are conflicting theories or, or, or sort of, um, there are conflicting ideas of how this happened. Uh, there, there's always that story about, you know, oh, um, people started aging stuff because they travel on horses back and you know, went through the weather and things like that. I'm not sure how accurate that is. It's a good story, uh, yeah. What, it's a good story, exactly. Uh, what certainly happened was that during the war and the immediate sort of post-war period, because of a lot of disruption, um, you didn't have new shipments of tea. So uh, warehouses around here would have to make do with what's already here. And so uh, you started having these sort of old warehousing that, that, that was older than normally they would keep them for. And maybe some people thought that there's actually, hey, with this one so bad. Interesting. Um, yeah, um, because, and, and that story sort of makes sense a little bit in the sense that this is not, this is not the type of <clears throat> taste you would, I mean, it's kind of like, you know, I always ask this, right? How, how do people discover cheese anyway? Like some Wait. guy randomly <laughs> found a... <laughs> curded milk that's kind of gooey and then you stick it in your mouth and try to eat it like and discover is actually like you know there's that there's there you need a little bit of push to get you to do stuff like that and you know a shortage of tea might do that yeah that makes that that, that makes sense i can totally see that if you know especially with you know the the, you know the, the focus on you know like Yunnan during the during the war, you know, like with the Japanese wanting it, and you know, like the Americans and the Flying Tigers and all that stuff, you know, like having a you know huge disruption in you know like the source of uh, stuff like Pu'er tea. I can see them just keeping stuff for longer, not knowing where it was going to, uh, or not knowing when it was going to be uh, getting getting more stuff. Um, so Hong Kong's um, um, Hong Kong's doesn't just have like one. <coughs> environment for storage is that right i mean there's different you well, know, no. like places and i think i think a lot of people get the idea that like anytime you use the phrase like hong kong storage it means just like wet and, and dank what is your experience with uh, the varieties of hong kong storage well the wet the wet and dank is the sort of signature sort of, um right signature look i guess you can call it yeah uh, of hong kong storage but the thing is um actually 
uh, with Hong Kong storage, okay, first of all, uh, there's wet, <clears throat> like there's wet cellaring, yeah. which is basically what happens. Uh, but you don't stick it in there forever. So like your cake is not always wet the whole time. It's right. in the storage. In fact, uh, old style sort of responsible storage technique, if you can call it that, uh, you should call it that, I guess, um, is um, you get your tea from Yunnan or your middleweight, your middleman merchant agent, whatever. They get shipped to Hong Kong and you sort of have to evaluate the tea like as the tea shop owner and look right. at it and kind of go, okay, so what do I have here? Uh, if it's like the normal stuff, what you do is you stick it in your cellar, uh, which is the wet and damp portion of the storage. And you leave that in there for a few years, mm -hmm. uh, maybe three to five. Uh, and then you pull it out and you have to evaluate it maybe uh, so sort of halfway through to see how it's going. If it's too much, then you already pull it out. And then you have to leave it in a dry storage environment to basically air it out yeah. for a further period, usually double or even triple the amount of time uh, that it's gone through wet cellaring. And then that tea is sort of considered done um, and really ready to go. Yeah. Now, uh, do people all do that as a rule? No, um, right. but th that's sort of the idea anyway. And the other thing is, um, depending on the tea shop, uh, they all have house styles Right. Uh, it's, it's, uh, and I suspect it has to do with just the natural environment in which they sell their tea. Mm -hmm. uh, some shops, uh, there's one called Yi'an, for example, they have a very distinctive sort of rice taste in their tea. Yeah. Um, and if you, if you have some of them and you have another tea from them, and you have the same tea from someone else, you will be like, okay, this is very different. Like, even though they're both wet stored or traditionally stored, I, I like to call them, uh, the tastes are very different. But, and some shops have a, such a distinctive style, you can actually know, oh, this came from that shop, didn't it? Like, if you're really sort of experienced with them. So, I'm, yeah, it depends a lot. I've got a cake or two in our storage here in Seattle, and I can, I can tell exactly which shop it was in because of the, the brand of cigarettes that guy uses because he stores everything right in his shop and he just smokes, chain smokes yeah. nonstop daily. And yeah. I pull that cake out and I'm like, yeah, yeah, this smells exactly like your, uh, your, your cigarettes. Is, he, is uh, smoking and, in tea shops a, a big thing in, in Hong Kong? No, no. It's Nobody interesting. It. In Yunnan, it's, 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 it's huge. And we were, we were in one shop and like everyone's, you know, like smoking and some guy comes in, yeah. you know, like he's yeah. smoking and he was like, he was complaining. He's like, yeah, I was just back in Beijing. He's just like, man, nobody, nobody smokes in tea shops there anymore. He's like, I, he's like, <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah, I was yeah, happy yeah. to get back, you know, like to the land of the free in Yunnan where I can still smoke in front of the, the babies yeah, yeah. and stuff. Like that. Oh yeah. When, when I was in, when I was in Beijing in 2006, uh, you know, I hung out in tea shops a lot. And back then a lot of the things people say are like, oh yeah, you can only properly taste poor uh, if you're smoking. That's right. I get that. I get I'm that sure, all the time. I'm sure you get that. Yeah. I'm sure you get that in Yunnan too. Yeah. There's an endless number of excuses. They're like, well, you know, like cigarette smoke like cleanses the palate, so we always smoke yeah, between yeah, yeah, sessions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, kind of, well, one guy would be like, you know, like, oh, well, they're both natural plants, so clearly they can't they <laughs> yes, can't contradict yes. each other because they both come from the earth. And I'm like, well, you know, I, you know, well, you know, I I prefer you know not to have my teas smoked on, but that's that's me. And then yeah. and then they look at me like, well, clearly you know you Americans don't know anything about tea. And I'm like, well, oh, of course, you're, you're right. Course. You're 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 right. I'm I say that a lot. I'm always like, yeah, you're absolutely right. So it's not worth fighting them over this stuff. No, um, no, it isn't. It it, it really yeah. isn't, especially if you're in their shop and stuff. It also you know comes becomes a little bit disrespectful. So I usually just kind of like smile and nod and you know. Like, yeah. I mean, they already are. They already offended enough by you refusing their cigarettes. <laughs> I, I know. They usually, I know. They uh, they give you that. What? What do you mean you don't smoke? Kevin? Yeah, I know the same thing. The same thing with 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 uh, with alcohol. And I used to I used to enjoy. Um, you know, I mean, I actually. I mean, I I, I, I do enjoy alcohol. I just don't enjoy <laughs> being like forced to drink alcohol. And you yeah, know, every yeah. single tea farmer or tea person we work with at some point in time, like, you know, like they're going to switch from the tea, they're going to switch to the alcohol. And it's always something mm -hmm. like, 
homegrown with like wasps in it or something like some that. Moonshine, like some moonshine, yeah, yeah. Moonshine, and it's usually really interesting stuff for a shot. But like, one shot is twenty <laughs> shots. Like once they know that you can drink, like you're you're yes. drinking all night. And I'm like, I just so now it's just like I have to just draw a hard line. I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry, you know, like doctor's orders. You know, like I can't drink, you know. Yep, and yep, they, yep. And they're yeah, like, you, blame it on health. Yeah. They're like, you drank last time. I'm like, yeah, that's the problem, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it is it is pretty interesting so um um yeah so uh when you, you were mentioning about you know like uh more of like the cellar storage or like the wetter storage and the drier storage we've noticed that a lot with um um the the shops that put more of a focus on you know quality uh, pu'er tea when we're in yunnan um will have uh, a storage warehouse in Guang, Guangdong or something like that where they you know, like they they get their uh, uh they get their shang pour and they send it all down there and it's there for like five years and they bring it back to Kunming and it's there for five years and I think that actually works out well I've noticed they 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 they, they uh, uh flip it for uh for show pour just because of the the wetness of show pour and the production of that they generally want to have it in a drier environment early okay. on yeah. you know for yeah. like maybe in like five to ten years dry and then or like five years or so and then after that you know it's kind of like calm down and then they'll send it back there have you have you what, what's your experience with uh with 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 uh with show pour and in, in, in aging um so if you people who read my blog will know i don't drink much at all. um but uh i've seen some some, I... some articles you I mean, Once in a while, yeah. yeah. But um, uh, my general uh, line about that is uh, I think it's much better uh, if it goes through Hong Kong storage. Um, it brings out all kinds of complexities and nuances and, and taste that you can't get without going through that cellaring process. Um, that you just don't get if you put it in some kind of dry storage. It's it's not interesting. And it doesn't change that much, right? So um, in dry storage, the most it's really doing is getting rid of some of that pondy, sort of weird processing smell that you get from show pour. Right. Whereas if it goes through the cellaring... Uh, so back when I started drinking tea, a big thing people talked about was um, the ginseng, sort of senxiang. Uh, the ginseng yeah. fragrance. Uh, you, you can't get that uh, from Sheng Pu'er, and you can't get that from dry age Sheng Pu'er either. Interesting. Uh, it, it, it's something that really only happens with fairly wet storage uh, conditions. And, and you know, do, do it, does everyone like it? No, obviously not. Um, but there are certain unique paths that aging or Sheng Pu'er can take that only happens if you sell it. Yeah. So from a, like, if you tried to break down like the nuts and bolts of, you know, like Hong Kong cellar storage, is there, is there some, in, in your opinion, is there something more than just like the level of temperature and humidity? Is there something naturally occurring in Hong Kong, some sort of, you know, like microflora or something that may be no. air or something like that? So do you, you think like if, if uh, even, even if it was just like an entirely different place, but like the actual, like temperature and humidity was uh, identical in a, in a private storage that you could do, uh, you could, you could replicate it? Well, well, you, you can't, you can't really replicate it easily. You need that. I think you, well, when, first of all, you need that volume of tea. Sure. No, absolutely. You're yeah. talking about a room, a concrete, usually room. Yeah. Uh, literally jam packed with tea. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, often sprayed down with some water uh, in at least with added humidity in some fashion or another. Uh, and then you have to rotate it. Um, and you've been storing teas of various ages in there for sometimes a number of years. That's why Yon has a special taste, I think, because that's whatever the cellaring, you know, flora, whatever is going on in there, in their storage, it has developed that distinctive taste. Um, and it might be from stuff that they have in their storage, it might be some kind of unique, I don't know, uh, microbio microorganism that that's growing inside on their tea, you know, in their storage. I don't know, but uh, in in that sense, it does. But I don't think there's anything special about Hong Kong. You can you should be able to re replicate the same thing in, in, in other places. Yeah, we've got a lot of our a lot of our customers do a lot of. Um... Um, small term experimentation with you know I know in Pumidor is pretty crazy Pumidor and stuff it's pretty it's yeah. pretty fun you're you're right though I mean like the more tea you have like the like the happier the 
the, the group the group is um you know it's easier to see, it's easier to see mold grow on one cake in my experience than it is on you know like you know like ten thousand cakes or something like that and it kind of yeah yeah I they think don't they regulate like each alone. other a bit yeah, yeah they regulate each other a little bit yeah the 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 most uh the quickest i've seen mold grow was actually on a cake i had on an on a coffee table yeah. In in my living room in Taiwan. Yeah. Um, it was raining for like a whole week. I had my windows open the whole time. And like three days afterwards, I, I went back to the cake. I didn't look at it for a while. It was just sitting there. And I was like, wait, that's mold. That's like, amazing. Where did this come from? Yeah. And it's just it's just wet. And so, you know, you don't need a closed space. You don't need um you don't need cellars to grow mold. Uh, it wasn't even hot. It was it was in the winter. Taipei winters are wet and miserable, kind of like Seattle. Um, yeah. And uh, and uh, it's it's yeah, it just started growing mold. So I immediately sort of closed the windows and started you know taking preventative measures. <laughs> Starting being a little more serious about it. Yeah. Yeah, because it's it's one thing to to have it grow on uh, like cellar stored tea yeah um in a kind of a somewhat controlled environment that's tried and true uh, at these old tea shops uh it's another thing for mold to be growing on your cake inside your house uh, that, that's that's a different that's a different thing altogether you don't know what the hell is going on so yeah yeah that's true you know as um you when you mentioned um you know like the storage environment and you know like cement and adding water and stuff i've um uh, we, we work with a number of uh chopur uh producers in in Kunming, I mean not in Kunming, but in down in down in, in Munghai. and um, the exact uh, specifics of the like the cement floor that they use also kind of plays into it. And most of them, most of them say it takes about ten like wet pile batches before like the cement becomes like seasoned to like their expectation. Mm -hmm. And so, so mm -hmm. they'll do like ten like really crappy like <laughs> like just tidy show show poor Wodwe on those uh, on the cement just to get the cement like season to their expectation but then after you know like after like five ten years of that like man like their teas just taste exactly the same because they've you know yeah. been doing a lot of that yeah. that's pretty interesting how um and you probably have to reuse the same cloths and the same you know all that stuff right i mean it's, it's kind of like breaking your teapot uh true. if you yep. have a brand new teapot it, it sucks out, it sucks out the life of your tea and, and you're not going to get much out of it yeah do you uh um let's see what was i going to think your thoughts on what young Sheng characteristics and qualities are, are best suited for uh, for aging? I know there's discussion on on that. Mm. So, mm. so we now live in the age where all the good stuff or at least supposedly all the good stuff right. gets um, gets made into single origin, yeah. single source cakes. And that's mostly a function of cost, right? Right. Um, you, it's very hard to find people who are willing to say, put some Lao Banjang material in some regular regular old blend of yours that doesn't yeah. talk about it because yeah. you can't sell it for that much and people are not willing to pay for that much of it. So uh, what ends up happening is that we have a lot of these single origin cakes. And uh, I am, after what, 15 years on the blog, at least 10 plus <clears throat> years of experience with some of these teas, I am now not that convinced that single origin cakes are good. Um, for long-term aging. Well, we don't really have much um, historical precedent for it, right? I mean, no, there's, there's no, no examples no. of 70s, 80s, 90s, 100% Labanjang Gushu cakes, right? No, they, they don't exist. Yeah. Um, uh, old cakes are all blends uh, on yeah. certain levels. Uh, and so, and especially because these days, you know, they, they find ever smaller units to, to name their cakes, right? You know, when, when I first got started, Drinking poor, sort of seriously, it was Iwu and, and Bulang and yeah. stuff like that. Now it's like some random village in Bulang Mountain. Right. Yeah. It gets. It goes from yeah. big to small. It goes from like Bulang yeah. to Lao yeah. Banjang to to this farmer yeah. to to, to so single this, to, to, single tree. Exactly. Yeah. Now it's gotten so small, um, and 
generally speaking, um, if you look at sort of other beverages and things like that, so you know, let's say you, you look at whiskey, right? Um, whiskeys are blends, uh, even if it's a single malt. Uh, that you're well, I should caveat that by saying, unless you're drinking single barrel whiskey, right. which is coming out of one barrel, uh, they are blends. Uh, right. Someone at the distillery is blending different years with a minimum age. You know, sometimes if there's an age statement. Uh, and blending it together to create a bottle that's that's good, and and they will take different barrels and sort of blend the different characteristics of it. Um, with single origin teas, especially when they get so small, you, you don't really have room for that. Yeah. Um, and they end up being sort of these monotone teas that I'm not sure age all that well, uh, yeah, that's... or are not that interesting when you drink them. That's, especially when they're aged. That's been our experience as well, because you know, coming from the coming from the coffee world, I was always really fascinated with you know, like single origin. You know, like if this if the coffee <laughs> thing came from like one farmer or something like that, I'd be super super interesting. And they're generally like really interesting, like in one or two areas, right? They're like super they're excel in something, yeah. but then yeah. like it's it's at the expense of uh, it's at the expense of, of of something else. And so right. every now and then we find like really yeah. yeah, every now and then we find like really interesting like single tree experiences and you know like we're trying you know like capture those and make them available to the the customers but i think uh, i think ultimately like um blends offer more balance i think the first time i saw like multi uh oh well personally the first time i, I personally saw multi uh multi-year blending going on was um at, at, at Shawan's factory, I thought it was really interesting. Like they had about a 10 year range of material and on any given, mm -hmm. for any given batch, they would sit there, the master blender would pick, you know, like that from that year, this from this year. And he'd go like that. He's like, okay, all right. You know, like now press, you know, like 500 kilos of that. But it was, yeah. that was how you they- see how, And that's yeah. their test run, you know, and they can see like, oh, that's how it goes, right? You know? Yeah. And if 500 kilos goes well, they can make five tons next time, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. I, was, I just thought it was really interesting how that's, I mean, it, you know, when you've got, you know, it's 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 kind of like Starbucks, right? I mean, Starbucks eventually, um, they're 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 kind of like a victim of their own success. Like you 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 if if you go to Starbucks, you know what you're going to get. You can pretty much go to any Starbucks in the world, and your coffee's going to taste about the same. But that also means you kind of like lose some of the the nuance that you might get from uh, from smaller stuff. You know, like company like Shaguan. I mean, they got a hundred years of like reputation. I'm like Shag Shaguan's got to taste like Shaguan, you know, and so. That gets mm -hmm. that gets a uh, that gets really tricky. Um, you know, we we try to release some similar stuff from year to year to year, but um, it, I, I can never make it taste exactly the same. You know, because there's so many oh, different variants well, between you know years and varietals. And or, if you want real consistency, you need like a big factory like Shaquan, like you said. You know, that that allows you. I mean, that, that's the other thing. Um, so blend gets a bad rep, or used to get a bad rep. Yeah. Uh, because. Part of it is to manage costs. Yeah. Um, is to make sure that tea doesn't cost too much, and uh, and is not affected by the fluctuations in the tea market uh, year by year. And and part of it is uh, consistency, which also means it's kind of boring. Uh, so for the for the aficionado crowd, um, it does get a little boring. You know, seven five four two is going to taste kind of the same year after year. Although Menghai doesn't really do that um, the way like Lipton would, right? Yeah. Like someone like Lipton is very good about maintaining the oh, same right. taste year over year. Menghai kind of doesn't care. And, you know, different batches <laughs> with different numbers would taste quite different. Uh, as anyone who's tried a number of 7542 can tell you, uh, they, it can they, vary. they can vary a lot, yeah. not just a little bit. Uh, some are really fruity. Uh, some other ones are really sort of bassy with like sort of a lot of dark notes um, and they're nothing alike. Um, so, so it really depends on how you take your blend, blending philosophy, but I, I don't think blends in and of themselves are bad. Um, I don't, and, I don't either. Yeah. And, 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 and I think, I think we, we actually should, should think more about blending because I, I worry about this, hyper focus on very small sources or yeah. small areas of sources for cakes. Um, and what ends up happening is like, let's say you have a tea that, that is, so you, I, I sort of deviated from your question. Your question is, you know, what, what do you think we're age for basically? Um, uh, I think first of all, your tea needs to be strong, right? So it needs to have 
there needs to be a, there needs to be stuff in the tea for it to age. Right. Um, uh, a tea that's already kind of soft and bland now, when it's just processed, yeah, uh, probably won't age into much that's interesting. It doesn't get stronger over the years. Let's put it that way. I've I've experienced um, that. You know, I've had I've had older teas where it it just tasted old and I'll, i had to imagine that the tea probably was really boring when it was young and now it's it's still boring but it has like an old flavor um yeah 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 and 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 they just kind of uh you know um and so you need to you, you want it to be strong and it's kind of like you know it's kind of like wines uh if you drink a, a a you know first growth bordeaux you know that's highly rated uh when they're new they are very aggressive and, and they're not really meant to be drunk right away. They are supposed to be aged in a bottle for like 10 years before you open it. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, if you want stuff you can drink right now, you drink something else. Uh, that's, that's more meant for immediate consumption. And I think for teas that, uh, that would age well, traditionally, uh, if you talk to people in Hong Kong, especially, they will tell you, oh, this used to be really bitter and smoky and, and and kind of nasty in a way um and that's what we age well at least according to the local wisdom here. right and uh i think there's some truth to that I, I think a tea that is too weak initially um probably won't go anywhere and, it has to have and, some character yeah and the other thing is also uh, uh you you generally want to buy spring tea if you can <laughs> Of course, yeah. it costs more, but there's a right. reason it costs more, right. uh, because they tend to age better um, for obvious reasons. Um, so yeah, uh, things like that. Uh, aside from that, it, it depends a lot also on things like processing. Uh, that, that gets into the real weeds. Um, yeah, that, 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 that really does. And it's, um, you know, as we, uh, well, as, as more and more people in the Western culture get, get into Pu'er, I, you know, you kind of see some of their tastes and expectations, you know, af affecting the production, you know, um, you know, we have a lot of conversations with, you know, customers that don't, don't want bitter tea. And I'm like, well, I mean, mm -hmm. tea, tea kind of even at, at its, at its basis was it's, it's, it's bitter. I mean, it's, it's a bitter, no, if you want, if, it's a bitter leaf, you know, if you don't want bitter tea, go drink some oolong. Yeah. There are plenty <laughs> of really nice oolong out there. It's uh, true. That are not bitter and very well made. Um, and you don't have to worry about aging. You don't have to worry about anything else. Just just drink them and buy more if you're out. I mean, it's it's, and frankly, uh, a lot of them are far more pleasant to drink immediately than poor. Um, so why 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 chase poor? Uh, the, the it's uh, it's there's it's, no reason to do that. It's <laughs> it's 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 the it's the cool thing cool thing to do. <laughs> everybody everybody uh, wants to be on the poor air train. Um, is it really? Um, I don't know. I, I guess I, maybe. Um, yeah. I. I I, I would say that there's there is some some aspect to it, you know. At least you know, I think the, I think the people who are really passionate about pu'er in the Western uh, social media sphere um, are super vocal about it. And you know, I mean, I, I have you know a really amazing relationship with pu'er tea. I mean, we built our whole company around just you know sourcing and selling pu'er tea, and I absolutely right. love. You don't sell you don't sell oolongs, right? Yeah, we don't. Else, right? um, yeah, yeah, and um, yeah. we may uh, we may work on some uh, some Yunnan Dian Hong, you know, black tea stuff this year. Dian Hong is nice. I, Dian Hong I, is very nice. I, I, I love it. I really, I really do. You know, but you know, our, our original intent was, you know, like I felt Pu'er tea had, you know, such an amazing experience and potential possible that I wanted. <laughs> I didn't want to get distracted. You know, I wanted us to be able to focus exclusively right. on exclusively on right. that. So that's why we we set up our um, set up our our, our company that way. Um, uh, so, you know, like, yeah, Western, Western social media, you know, like bloggersphere and stuff, you know, like there's a lot of really passionate people about Pu'er Tea that have like a really amazing relationship with it. And they talk about it all the time and other people come in and they're like, I want to get in on this, but you know, like Pu'er Tea may not be the thing for them or they may not be ready for Pu'er Tea and they try really hard and they don't have like the same experience that, you know, some of the experienced tea drinkers will and they don't understand why. And they're like, well, if, you know, like I would love this as if it wasn't bitter, you know, and so then they kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of, kind of goes from there. And it's, it's, um, we have that conversation with customers sometimes and, you know, we've found some, some interesting, um, uh, you know, Pu'er Teas that are probably more ready to drink now that, you know, maybe are kind of like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to call them like training wheel pu'ers and stuff like that, but they're de definitely more, more gentle and geared towards, um, towards, towards beginners. And then we've got other teas that, you know, like, Hey man, if you really want like 
full, like super strong, bitter PRT experience, you know, you can get that too. So, mm. yeah, I, I guess if you're drink, if you're buying it to drink now, your calculation is very different. So um, yeah, well, let's can't speak to that really. That's a hard thing for the uh, like the Western audience because I mean we don't have uh, we don't have a history of you know you know uh, tea shops in the neighborhood that have you know 30, 40 years of you know aged, oh, sure. aged I know. tea and so at some it's and and it's um you know for me who you know we, we realized early on that we needed to um, sell teas that we could you know like source and produce ourselves you know because then I actually mm-hmm. had much more control over like I knew exactly like. Like how it was made, when it was made, where it was made, because I harvested the the materials ourselves. I didn't have to worry about when and where and, and how it was uh, how it was stored. So I could have a, a more um, honest conversation with my uh, customer about that. Um, uh, but then there's the, there's a level of it, you know, like it for me it would feel disingenuous to tell my customers, yeah, by the way, like don't drink this for twenty years. You know, it's like so I. I, cause there's not a well, lot of people not, in the Western audience that are going to anyway. be like, you know, I, I know, but I mean, I'm just, I'm just using that as a, use, using that as an example. So for ourselves, we try to find something that at least has some interesting drinkable characteristic now that hopefully will um, age into something in the future. Cause I, I, you know, I'll be honest, like I only have, you know, eight ish, nine years experience, like drinking tea and, mm-hmm. or aging tea. I mean, I've been, I don't mean, I don't mean drinking tea, but I only have like nine years of personal experience where like I've actually like aged cakes of myself so i mean any any time i'm telling somebody like this is definitely going to age well like i'm you know gleaning from the wisdom of you know like people like you or other people who have been around much uh much longer and so we try to just uh give the same the same things to our uh same information to our customers um what do you think about the different um um varietals or sub varietals like you know like wild varietals or wild puer and things and do they have any any potential for uh for aging no yeah no don't buy them. <laughs> uh, that's my hot take. Don't that's, buy them. That's your, that's your hot um, take. Don't buy it. Only yeah. only buy them if you want to drink them now. Or you don't care. And you don't get you don't get headaches from them. But otherwise, don't touch them. Um, yeah, there's uh, there's 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 interesting there's interesting uh, there's interesting wild wild stuff out there. Um, uh, had, I know. I know. Some, I know. I know. We've had some, and I generally have the same. Uh, um, I've got generally gotten the same, you know, like reaction from other, you know, like tea shops or um, vendors of, uh, of poor tea or, you know, like poor tea, you know, like experts. I'll bring them some interesting, like wild stuff that I've found that, that I enjoy drinking and they have the same reaction. Like, nope, nope, don't do it. Don't do it. But um, I don't know, some, uh, some certain wild stuff. I, uh, I can, uh, I can, I can dig it. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, like yeah. I said, if, sure. if, if, if you have fun with it, if you like it, if you know, your body doesn't reject it, fine, do whatever you want. Yeah, um, that's an important just, thing. Just, just, just don't buy them expecting they're going to age like poor. They're not really poor, you know. So don't. Yeah, just. I, I think that's why I, I'm a little bit unhappy when people call them poor because they're not. Um, they're something else. They're tisane. They're whatever. But yeah, you know, perfectly fine with that. You know. No, I mean you're. Thank you. You're absolutely right. I mean from the. <laughs> just, from the specific, you know, government mandated definition of puer tea, you know, Camellia sinensis, you know, yeah, as- asamica. It's very specific. And if, if it yeah. is, if it is, you know, Camellia sinensis, whatever else it is, I mean, it's it is no longer in the the definition of it. But I guarantee, like every single person in Yunnan is going to be telling you it's 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 puer. I mean, obviously they want it, they want to sell it, and they want to be on like yeah. the, the 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 puer the puer hype train and stuff and it may actually even yeah. be meet every single other definition of it including you know like processing and picking and sun drying and rolling and things uh, but um sure. but it's uh but it still wouldn't you know technically meet like the government level definition of it so no you're absolutely uh absolutely uh absolutely right on that so um no, and, and no actually it's, it's not so much that it's, yeah. it's it's not so much the government definition of it it's, yeah it doesn't age it doesn't age like that and and yeah i think i think that's the the Thing people have to remember that's so that's something other, that we you know we, we we run into that as well and like a lot of the discussions and things that we have with you know customers they always want to know like like why other teas don't age and even just then like like the phrase age i mean well i mean technically my furniture is aging right now i mean things things everything gets older <laughs> but you know you have this idea of it. yeah i know i'm aging you know like it, and you know like everything's aging but you know even i mean oolong black teas green teas those are all aging but there's this idea that you know like poor tea grows or becomes becomes something different and um um i i find that interesting but i find that you know even in um yeah you'll you'll 
people are aging black tea cakes now and trying to sell, you know, like eight. How do you, how do you feel about like non puer teas, you know, like um, being aged? Oh, uh, well, so with black tea, so I've had old black teas before, um, like 20, 20 plus years old black tea. Wow. Um, they're a little weird. Um, <laughs> they can be kind of sour. Uh, they, they, they have this kind of citrusy kind of taste. It's, it's very odd. Uh, this was some Dian Hong. So, um, and, and funny enough, uh, areas that used to produce black tea back before the poor craze, like Meng Ku, uh, yeah. now they're all producing poor because poor costs more. Yeah. Uh, but uh, if you buy a cake of Meng Ku, uh, like Shuangjiang Meng Ku, for example, you know, they're the sort of probably the biggest producer in that area, right? Um, and you leave their cakes to age for 20 years or so. Well, guess what? The tea tastes like black tea. Or at least there's that black tea note in them. And I right. think part of it is a varietal issue. Is <clears throat> because for decades, the tea was bred, uh, was, 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 they, they, they've cultivated the tea with the intent to make black tea out of it. And I think some of those are probably still in, in the leaves and, and the way they process it and whatever. And so like 15 year old Manku cakes that I have, you know, there's, there's a black tea note in them that, that you won't find in Meng Hai cakes, for example. Interesting. Um, you think that that's, you think that's more something native to the um, variety? I think it has or, something or to do with the plants. The growth I think of the, it has plant, something to do not, with the plants, not how it was processed. Or, or how, no. And, and I think it has maybe to do with terroir. Uh, uh, that, that might have something to do with it too. I find the concept um, of, of terroir pretty pretty fascinating. What do you mean? Um, I mean just 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 the idea that um, you know a different a different year can make the the tea taste different based on you know weather patterns or you know like if a tea was uh, I guess I guess weather doesn't play into it as much as uh, as much as, as terroir, but um, um, I mean well, the, microclimate basically I mean. microclimate or the idea that you shouldn't you shouldn't pick tea on a on a cloudy day you know you get different um, there there well you shouldn't pick tea on a cloudy day is a very simple mechanical issue yeah um, you shouldn't pick tea on a cloudy well cloudy maybe not as much now because there are lots of ways to mitigate that you shouldn't pick tea on a rainy day because the water content goes up. Um, and the water content goes up, and also the, the, the moisture in the air goes up, which means that when you wither the tea, yeah. it takes way longer, and it doesn't wither properly. Right. And if it doesn't wither properly, your tea will oxidize, it will get sour, it will do all kinds of weird stuff. And the way to mitigate that is by adding heat, right? Um, uh, you, you, you blow hot air onto the tea, you know, there, there are now machines that help basically help you wither the tea. Yeah. But the result is not quite the same. And so uh, skilled tea makers who have done this for years and who kind of know exactly what they're dealing with uh, have a way of handling these and can basically mitigate these issues. But if you're in an area where equipment is not as good uh, or the guy is not as experienced, yeah. uh, do, picking on a rainy day or a very cloudy day can, can really screw things up and uh, your, your leaves will come out worse for it. So, yeah. And anyway, go back to your question about aging other tea. I mean, I, I drink aged oolongs all the time. Uh, yeah. Nothing's wrong with that. Yeah. Um, oolongs can age pretty well. Uh, certain people would tell you that aged oolong is basically a scam. It's whatever is left over and they're just selling you old crappy tea. And you should rather be drinking new stuff, but you know, eh, I, I I like it. So and, okay. and it's 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 way cheaper than than age poor, um, and uh, and I find it comforting sometimes. It's it's interesting. Um, poor can be kind of aggressive, right? Uh, age yeah. long is not. It's it's sort of the opposite of aggressive. So um, so there's there's that going for it. Um, yeah. So. On the topic Don't of age green tea, though. <laughs> about that, that's old grandpa. Grandpa's old. Grandpa's old Longjing. Um, yeah, that's what Lama's Lama's grandfather is the same way. He's just got like a big basket of it. Like who knows how how old it is, and you know oh, it's not sealed. Or he just he just grabs whatever he, and tosses it in. And I remember um, um, you know offering him some. I mean he's in he's in his he's in his nineties now. He doesn't really get around or move too much. He just you know like sits and drinks it, watches um, watches TV. 
Um, but he, uh, he came and sat down for like a Gong Fu session with us and like he had one cup and then he was just like, nope, <laughs> like in the, in the seven years that we've been there, he's never sat down for Gong Fu with us like ever again. And sometimes I'll bring something interesting back. I'm like, grandpa, you want, you want a little bit of this in your mug today? I'm like, nope. He's like, doesn't, it's just, it's just long Jane. Well, yeah, oh, because, yeah. That's what because, he, yeah. uh, and not just that. Uh, so I, I have an article about this, uh, uh, and basically, this whole idea of drinking kung fu cha is is in places that are not Chaozhou or not Southeast China is very yeah. new. Like, yeah, uh, your your wife's grandpa had probably never seen this kind of setup to drink tea until yeah. fifteen years ago, maybe. Yeah. Um, at best. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and and is is all very foreign to most of China. Uh, for my grandpa too, where he lived in Hong Kong for most of his life, and uh, he was—I remember brewing tea for him once, or taking him to a tea shop once. And he's like, "Wait, how do you drink this stuff? It's, the cups are so small," because you know he's drinking out of his mug all the time, and or either that or like glasses. And these cups are tiny, and he's like, "Oh, the tea is really strong." It's—it's it's a completely different way of drinking tea, and people forget that. So, yeah, that's... Uh, and I think foreigners see that, yeah. see this. And or not this because this is somewhat Japanicized, uh, if I can call it that. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, the traditional kung fu cha wouldn't set up like this. Uh, but um, uh, foreigners see this and they say, "Oh, this is the Chinese tea ceremony." Right. Uh, but that that that's basically a lie. So anyone who tells you like this is a ceremony, it's yeah, it's, they're. they're, they're they're making stuff up. You're right. I mean, it it can be done ceremonially, but um, maybe it's, yeah, it's certainly yeah. not. I mean, I'm talking about like at, at the end, at the end, at the end user perspective, because we have a lot of we have a lot of customers that you know treat this as a as, as a personal personal ceremony. I know, um, I know, because because for them, it's foreign, is 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 exotic. It's interesting, right? They no, think this is authentic. I know, but, <laughs> absolutely. But this is this is actually if anything but authentic and yeah. you know we have a lot of cust you know you know conversations <laughs> with our customers and they'll ask us like what's the what's what's the best way to drink tea or what's like the what's the, what's the proper way of drinking tea and you know i try to and try and you know encourage them to, to find something that works for themselves and then they're always just like well how do people drink it in china and i'm like well the average grandpa person is, gonna, it, it is they're going to drink it grandpa style every single restaurant yeah. you go to every single home you went to and you yeah. know um you know our first time in yunnan 2004 13 2014 uh we didn't see gong fu setups at any of the tea farmers that we went to you know no, and the now, only places that will have them yeah. are tea shops and yeah. tea markets so we found that we had yeah. to because this is this is how i have you know like chosen to, to brew tea this is how i pref prefer brewing tea um uh, we found that we had to bring our own teaware to the the tea mountains mm -hmm. but now oh my gosh like every single tea farmer has like a giant room and like a mega With table a giant table and, like that yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, i mean this is this is like a kids table in in, I know, in I, know. Not. I mean they've got like boom like gorgeous giant yeah. ones and there's fish in yeah. them and stuff and they're definitely <laughs> like pushing the pushing the whole um the whole thing i i gravitated to um gong fu cha because this is how i made coffee like this was this, this, I, I, I took this exact same mindset of like, you know, like high attention to, to detail in, in, in the coffee that I would make, you know, I would do, I would do, um, you know, I'd be measuring out the beans exactly and exactly like, you know, like my bean to water ratio was exactly right. And so I, I took coffee uh, making and I treated it, um, ceremonially. I added, added the attention, the attention to it. And so the first time, like I saw somebody brewing tea this way, I was like, oh, that's great. I didn't know, like you could it just everything just kind of like clicked it was uh the summer of me finding pu'er tea like a lot of, it was just learning a lot of new things and so i i gravitated very quickly to uh, to brewing tea this way even if it is not a uh, traditional way or even if it's not a, a chinese uh even if it's not an actual ceremony and that's something that we try to well, communicate it's to our customers. a chinese way yeah it's not the chinese way i think i mean now now it has become the chinese way but that's a fairly recent <clears throat> development yeah, it's it's interesting. That's something that people don't um, people don't really realize. And you know, like they talk about like the Japanese tea ceremony, which is absolutely a ceremony. I mean, like they put they put yes. the motion they put the motions yes. above like the actual output of the of of the, of the quality of the tea. And like I try to do it, For I try to people, do it yes. in reverse. Like I want like if, if I'm not making good tea, then I'm going to change my my methods. Um, well, the 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 Japanese practitioners would tell you that they are trying to make good tea. Um, and, and, and perfecting the motion will help you to make good tea. But, um, but I think, yeah, a lot of it gets lost. And then uh, for a lot of average practitioner, getting the motions right become 
in and of itself a goal. Uh, sometimes at the expense, and you see this with Chinese people too. Um, yeah. So people who go to like um, those Lu Yu Cha Yi Zhongxing, you know, I don't know if there's one in Kunming. So this is a, a a school that was started by Tian Fu, you know, Tian Fu Tea, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and um, they teach you, and they use things like stop clocks and stuff like that. And they will teach you, you know, how to brew tea, and you have to measure, you know, everything, and you have you have a timer, and you know, all that stuff. But I know people who are so obsessed with the timer, and you know, these things, they forgot that they haven't reboiled their water, so their water is like now eighty-five degrees instead of a hundred, and they and lost in the they details. get they get lost in the in the in the in the other stuff, and and yeah, so you could you could get, and it's very overwhelming, right? If you're brewing tea, you know, sure. new to the new to the thing, and you kind of don't know what you're doing, and, and it's 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 a lot of things to keep track of. Yeah. So some of the people in chat are making fun of me for um, making you drink Chong Tai. <laughs> if I <laughs> apparently I they 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 say that you uh, that that you don't like Chong Tai from your blog, and if I uh, I've oh. missed I've missed that in there. So how is how is this experience um, for you, or how is how is this tea for you uh, uh, today? Uh, a lot of Chong Tai is kind of bland yeah. and not that great. Um, and I think we can all agree on that. Uh, this tea is actually not too bad. Uh, okay. For what? What is it? Forty dollars? I think I saw. Uh, I think so. I think so. Hundred grams. Hundred forty dollars. Hundred grams. Forty dollars. You can do a lot worse. Uh, for forty dollars, for hundred grams at this age, um, there there are far worse out there. Um, that's not a ringing endorsement, I suppose. But you no, know, no, I, I have no, I have no problem. I have no problem drinking this at all. In fact, in fact, it's quite pleasant. Right. Um, it's, it's. Is it the strongest or the best age thing from two thousand five? Yeah. No. Um, uh, is it decent? Sure. Would I drink it again? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, from our, uh, no, from our inventory, nothing's wrong with that. It was uh, the, the the trick was trying to um, have something that we could both drink together. If uh, answering the uh, the nobody's question here, the trick was uh, the trick was um, for these interview sessions we like to have um, we like to have a shared session, you know. And I, I obviously can't have you in my home right now, so you know we sent you some something from uh, from our inventory, from our collection, something I knew that I had here, something that we we had that we could uh, ship to you relatively quickly, something that was roughly in the sphere of where you like to drink age wise, and so uh, we settled on the uh, two thousand three. Uh, Chang Tai. So, and 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 the thing is, um, the storage on this thing is pretty good. So this is not your typical Kunming storage. Um, like Kunming stored tea can really be kind of frozen in time, as you probably know. Yeah. Uh, and they like fifteen year old Kunming tea can be kind of green and just like what happened to time, you know. And this is that. not that. Um, uh, you yeah. said this is stored in in Xishuan uh, and I can believe that. That's uh, what they told us. Yep. Because when I tried this the first time, you know, without actually reading up on it, I was like, "Oh, this, has this been through like Guangdong or something like that?" I assume it's like Guangdong. Yeah, I, I, I assume it's been stored around here because it tastes like something stored around here. I myself, um, I like stuff that has a dank-ish edge to it, and um, you will not find hardly anybody in Kunming that, that agrees with that. They're always just like, "No, no, 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 no!" Like you got to drink, you know, just Kunming Whoa. storage. And, they're um, talking up their book. I mean, sure, they, they don't have access to that. So, absolutely. You know, they, 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 they're going to tell you that, that dank. I mean, the, the usual line you hear is, oh, dankness means it's bad. It'll, yep. it'll kill you or the mold. And it's like, yep. dude, Hong Kong has like the highest life expectancy and everyone drinks poor here. Like if, if dank tea kills you, like we we'll all be dead. That's true. So uh, and it doesn't work like that. I always find it, I always find it a little humorous. I think we, we chatted about this last week when we were doing the, uh, the, the test stream. Um, and, you know, like they'll always bring out like some article or something. And they're like, you got to read this. You got to read this article. And this is like scientific, you know, like review of like those teas from there. And so I'm sitting there like going through the details and I'm like, wait a minute, like this was funded by like, like the Kunming Tea Storage Collective. <laughs> like, so of course you guys have a little bit of a bias on that. But uh, I just, yeah. I, just, I just find it funny because, um, um, and we, we have an interesting, an interesting take on it as well. You know, like, um, you know, selling our teas. You know, like, um, we had to make the decision on how, how we were going to, to store it. And we, we specifically went for kind of like a middle of the road <laughs> characteristic. I, I know, like a lot of our customers don't like you know like a dank stored tea and a lot of them don't like a super dry tea so i tried to find something in our storage that was middle of the road that would uh, that wouldn't 
superimpose like exactly my thoughts on the tea until the customer had a chance to buy it. And then if they want to like Pumador it super dank or keep it drier, then they could, they could do that. That was um, a decision that we made early on. How do you, how do you store the tea in Kunming? So in Kunming, it's just, uh, just straight, straight, natural, straight natural storage, but our storage warehouse is a little bit closer to, uh, to Dien Lake. So I think it's a little bit a little bit, little bit moister uh, environment than, um, say, up by the the markets, which are uh, further away. I think the markets are actually a little bit, little bit drier. So that was a, a choice that we made. I wanted to have, a, I wanted to have a place that had good air and was just a little bit less dry as as Kunming. And Kunming actually has a, a remarkable amount of um, variation. If you're up in the up in the hills, or if you're in right. the northern right. side of the city, or if you're closer closer to Dien Lake, and so. Um, I've been pleased with our um, relatively hands-off approach to it. I also don't want to have to, you know, like be, you know, since I'm, I can't be there all the time, I don't want to have to be like, you know, like, oh, taking this tea and moving it around and doing that. So I wanted something that was a little bit more uh, hands-off that wasn't um, too, um, too risky. But uh, here in Seattle, um, I actually have to have a, a more of a temperature-controlled, humidity-controlled room. I keep things around, around 65, 65. Um, that's what I. Well, Seattle yeah. is weird, right? Because it's yeah, it's got a cold and wet winter. Yeah, for very a long cold. Time. Very wet. And and then a very dry summer. That's yeah. Warmer. So yeah. it's it's <clears throat> it causes problems uh, because cold and wet is it means mold city. So, mold city. Uh, yeah. yeah. So it's 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 tricky. Yeah. No, I mean mold, and that's uh, the the joke here is that like nobody actually grows a lawn they just kind of cultivate their it's moss, cultivate yeah. a moss kind of cultivate yeah. a fungus and it just it just yeah. uh, it permeates uh, permeates everywhere and it's actually a you know difficulty for you know like cars and stuff like that like i've got a vehicle that i don't drive a lot of the time and i have to turn it around because it just gets a green sheen on whatever side doesn't get sunlight you know it just right. kind of just just grows. Yeah. I lived in Vancouver so. for four years, so so. Oh, so yeah, you know, you're pretty you're, familiar with the weather there. Yeah, it's the Pacific uh, Northwest. Yeah, it's not 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 the nicest place to live if you don't if you if you don't like rain. <laughs> so how do you? Uh, what are the what are the details of your your personal puer storage? Oh, I just store it in in some building here. There's nothing nothing too interesting. Uh, Hong Kong is pretty hands off usually. Uh, just try to make sure you don't you don't have rats or mold in there, and you, you'll be fine. You find you find the rats the, the the Hong Kong rats like like the like the tea they uh, they'll munch. No, on but it. supposedly they do. I mean, I, yeah. I I don't have any, thank God. But you know, uh, supposedly rats are actually pretty good at eating for it. So uh, so well, that's what I've been told anyway. Yeah, and thankfully we thankfully we don't have to deal with that here. I mean, there are. Seattle has a decent decent amount of uh, rats, but uh, keep uh, keep them keep them under under control. Um, uh, yeah, we do, and uh, we do in Kunming occasionally get some of the the bugs that like to to munch on the munch on the wrappers. They like to kind of like chew through Nothing's the wrong paper with that. and stuff like that. In fact, yeah. in fact, I think uh, having some bugs that will chew through your paper means you're actually doing okay storage wise. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, because uh, wrappers that are too too clean and nice after like fifteen years usually means it's uh, it's probably a little too dry. Um, yeah interesting okay. and uh and that's my experience anyway just just sort of a casual non-scientific observation um, right of course it depends on the paper too right uh they, they like certain kinds of paper over others so uh you know after a while you you, you sort of notice these things yeah our uh... there's, there's a question in chat i noticed uh uh <laughs> whether oh, yeah, i would hammer this tea or not um <laughs> I, I don't think I'll hammer it just because I can probably find something similar for cheaper here. But sure. then, you know, you guys yeah. don't live in Hong Kong. So, uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll buy a dozen of these. Uh, that's a ringing endorsement enough, I think. Awesome. Uh, I, well, you know, I, I appreciate that. And I'm not that. just being polite. I'm not just being polite. Okay. This, okay. Is, this tea is fine. Everyone's saying that. They're like, he's so diplomatic. He's being so polite. Yeah. That's, that's, pretty, yeah, yeah. that's pretty funny. Um, I'm not that rude, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't think you are. And um, but uh, just uh, the chat. The chats. The chat's pretty. Uh, pretty. Pretty funny. Yeah, they want. They want fireworks. Yeah. Um. Favorite. Uh, favorite village slash region for uh, for for Puer tea. What do you. Uh, what do you generally go for? If if we're not. I mean, we're jumping out of the. Uh, if it's not a, a blended tea, how do you. Uh... Whew. Let me get some water while I think about it. Sure. Okay. 
Here we go. I can chat with I can chat with people in the in the chat. Uh, I really appreciate all you guys uh, jumping on. This was a uh, this is great. We've got a uh, we got a lot of a uh, lot of lot of people in here. Um, I'll probably in another you know like ten minutes or so maybe open things up to some uh, some questions. Uh, oh. Oh yeah, sure. Um, yeah, Lama, you can rip that paper off if you want to hand it to me, and um, I'll. Uh... So far, just two questions. All right. Only got it. Well, I haven't. Uh... All right. I was telling people in chat they can I can um, in another. 10 minutes or so I'll, I'll open it up to like whatever questions they uh they have and um llama was doing pretty good about keeping track of some of the uh, some of the questions that people have oh okay so um, um yeah you were telling me so uh, uh villages slash village. region so i i when i started out drinking poor sort of serious uh, i like EUTs a lot but yeah um and Sometimes it's still nice, uh, but I find a lot of you that you can get on the marketplace. Can you can you move your mic to, just a scratch closer? Oh, I think sorry. I think I think I got bumped sorry. out of the way just a little bit. Just no, that's all. Just just move the mic a scratch closer. It'd be good. Thanks. Um, so yeah, uh, when I started out uh, EUT, I think I drank a lot of uh, because just for various reasons. But it was it was what I thought was nice. But um, over the years, I think it's gotten less. Less interesting for me, um, and I like things that are from Monghai area better these days, uh, especially when aged. I think they actually age better than EUTs, uh, or at least modern twenty-first century EUTs. Um, and the thing is with the old sort of antique teas, right? Yeah. Uh, not all antique teas are great. Uh, there are a lot of them that were kind of, yeah, I don't know how many you've had, um, but quite a few are just kind of, you know, taste like old socks. Yeah, um, it's just they, they and, uh, yeah, I mentioned that old, earlier, it's but, just, they're just, yeah, they're just old. Huh? They're old, uh, they're, they're interesting, but, you know, not, not amazing. There's a reason uh, Hongying is often more expensive than uh, a lot of antique teas that are actually older. Because either they have gone downhill, you know, because it's been so long, yeah, or uh, it's just not that great. Uh, and Hongying was, in some ways, more consistent because it was factory tea and it's, right. it's centrally run. And um, so I find that a lot of Bulong area or Menghai area tea in general uh, to probably have a better aging potential in the long run. I found uh, um... in terms of keeping strength and stuff like that. So. You know, we spent a lot of time in the in the markets when we were first getting started. And this is something we, you and I, chatted about last last week. Um, you know, gleaning as much uh, information and advice and knowledge I could from the the tea shop owners and things there. And I, one guy specifically said, um, I, I I like the way he described it, and I didn't understand it at the time, but I get it now. You know, I talked about the different mountains and things that that, that we were trying to get some teas from, and uh, he's. He, he basically said, if it's not in Menghai, it's a young man's game. And I was just like, I didn't really get that, but like now I really do. It's just like, in, and that's why none of them go anywhere else. Like they, you know, like they've got their like one month during the spring picking season, like they all go to Menghai and they just sit there and they never, they just go in day trips to these little mountains and they can get every single thing that they've gotten because they've spent enough time. They know it's like a lot more effort. You know, if you're going out to like some remote village area and it takes like three or four days to get out there and you know, like you're sorting through like what these different farmers have done. It's just a lot more, it's a lot more work. And I thought that was a really interesting way to describe it. And I totally get it now. Well, yeah. And, and, and I've run into people who claim they press their own cakes, you know, and they have like 20 different pressings a year. And you look, at, you look at where they go or where they're supposed to have gone. And you look at it and it's like, that's not possible. What, how, how, is, how is that physically possible? Like, do you, are you flash? Like, how do you get from A to B to C, you know, all in a month of, of spring pressing? Like, you're either having someone to do it or you're going yeah. way after the fact and buying up some random bags of tea that who knows where it came yeah. from. Uh, and uh, yeah, so there's a lot of that going on and, and they sell it at expensive prices. So th there's no guarantee you're getting what you're, and that's the other thing with, with poor, right? It's, um, yeah. there's basically no law, uh, about, uh, names, uh, and appellation, you know, control. So 
anything goes really. Um, and nothing is stopping me from rewrapping your cakes and selling it as my own pressing. Yeah, we uh, see that. We see that all the time. If you don't have an AFA, yeah. Even if you have an AFA, we've, I mean, we've, yeah, I, even I've, if you have an AFA, you're right. I've <laughs> seen that factories, factories will take a cake and they'll steam off the top bit, pull the AFA yeah, out, yeah, yeah. stick somebody else's AFA yeah. and press it down. Or, yeah. Yeah. Um, Not hard. Yeah. yeah. It's a, it's a, it's and, uh, certainly anything, anything can happen in, in that, in that, in that regard. Yeah. And, 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 and I asked you this, you know, uh, I have friends who literally sleep with their tea, uh, when they go to Yunnan to press stuff, because that's the only way you can be sure yeah. that what you what's being pressed is actually what you pay for. Yeah. Um, cause otherwise you can't, you can't even like let it out of your sight, uh, yeah. for any amount of time, uh, yeah. cause otherwise stuff happens. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're you're absolutely yeah. right, and and we're start you're starting to as as places you know like you know like La Banjong and La Mana and get you know get much 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 higher dollar. You even start seeing um, a lack of trust between you know like family members. You know like they can't let totally. they can't they won't let like their brother around like the tea that they pick because they know that he's just gonna like immediately just gonna swap the bags out. And so that's that's yeah. a little disappointing yeah. to to see you know like that level of you know greed you know creep in or maybe it was already always always, always there. Um, Oh, it, it was always there, but yeah. but you know, look these these guys. I mean, you gotta you gotta you gotta see it from like twenty years ago. So when I first got started, you know, a kilo of yi wu, gu su, yeah, supposedly gu su tea, and this was the sort of low villages, the the ones right around yi wu town, you know, uh, places like mahe and stuff like that. Um, a kilo of Mao Cha was like what twenty bucks, twenty renminbi, um, per kilo. Spring, yeah, you know, first picking. Yeah, I mean that's nothing, and that's already considered really expensive. Okay. Yeah. And then two years later, it jumped up to like two hundred renminbi, you know, Beijing. And these days, you know, you're talking thousands, um, if not more. So uh, for for them who have been impoverished for generations really um this is their one chance to make some money man yeah and uh yeah. you can't you, you, you gotta you, you can't blame them at all and but, i don't and and and, yeah. and for them you know they don't know when this gravy train will end sure right? they, they're not sure if this is i mean it looks like now it's probably not going to go away at least not completely yeah but um but only certain kinds of trees are really worth a lot of money yeah so if you have like a dozen of them you want to make sure that you know, you don't over harvest it till it dies, yeah. which happens sometimes. Some idiot doesn't come and chop it down in the middle of the night and steal all your tea. Yeah. You know, and you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, um, blame them. I, uh, no, you're right. You can't blame them. And it's, it's, it's interesting in a little, I mean, it, it, uh, I, I feel, I feel sad for the people that were, that just happened, the farmers that just happened to be born with tea on a mountain that nobody cares about. <laughs> You know, we spend some time mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. driving through Ailao Shan. Yeah. That and happens. <laughs> they are like absolutely, you know, just dirt poor. And, mm-hmm. you know, some guy 20 years ago came in and was just like, no, 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 no. Like, you know, like I'm you know, like, I represent a big tea shop in Taiwan. I'm going to buy all this. I'm going to do all this. But like, we don't want pu'er. So go ahead and like chop out these pu'er plants and throw in a bunch yep. of like oolong varietals. And the farmer's like, yep. okay, really? That's great. And then they literally never see that person again. And now they've got, you know, like 25 year old, like oolong varietal bushes and nobody wants to buy their material. And they're like, what do we, what do we do? And you feel so bad, you know, like some guy, you know, like 15 miles down the road, like he happened to, you know, like have, you know, be in the village where they've got all the gushu and he happened to be born on that area. And so he can make tons of money and this person can, you feel a little. And you got to remember like before 2004, 2005, gushu actually costs less than plantation tea. Because gusu was more annoying to pick, huh. they right. produce less, you know, right. uh, because you know older trees produce less leaves. That's that's the general rule, uh, and uh, the tea is, at least initially, it's, it's milder, right? It, it doesn't taste as strong, um, and so uh, was not. That's these chopped down, yeah, basically. Oh, your uh, your video is uh, your video is cutting out a little bit there. Are we having a uh, trouble with the uh, the connection. Should be fine for his. 
Maybe uh, I hope it's not. I hope it's not on this side. Um, let me uh, let me see real quick here. So say that again. I couldn't. I couldn't hear you. Oh, yeah. Your video is. Uh, oh wait, are we back? Nope. It's uh, it's lagging. Oh wait, there we go. I think we're. Uh, I think we jump back in. Maybe. Um, somebody was curious. Um, Marshall N. Why? Uh, why? Why? Why Marshall N? Why'd you? Uh, why'd you choose and pick that name? Nope, I think, uh... Dangerous. Or that I just ended up using. <laughs> just something, yeah. Um, it's actually it... lagging pretty hard on this end. Um, it's not moving. Yeah, I know, it's lagging, lagging, lagging pretty hard on this end. Um, I could try to, uh, mm. try to reconnect the, uh, try and, um, restart the, uh, Zoom, or do you want to... I'm just trying to figure out what's the uh, what's the what's the best thing to uh, to do here. So, um, tell you what. Um, well, let me make sure my computer is not doing some stupid update. Windows update in the background. Yeah, kind of stuff uh, that happens sometimes. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Check that, and then um, if that doesn't work, um, maybe log out and reconnect, and. Um, same, uh, same, same link. It should work. Reason why it should be lagging. Am I still? Am I still frozen? I can hear the audio pretty decent, but the uh, the video uh, updates about once a sec. Oh wait, no. I think it's uh, I think we're back. Are we back? Maybe we're back. Okay. Um. So you're, you're explaining you just uh, Marshall Lounge, just uh, yeah. just something you picked. Uh, uh. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 just something I picked. Uh, it has to do with yeah. history. I'm a historian, so uh, so. Back then, I was interested in Napoleonic history, and, and it actually refers to uh, Michel Ney, who was a marshal of France uh, under Napoleon. So that's that's all. Cool. Well, very it's cool. Just a gaming handle, really. But you know, <laughs> you, you, something stick with you for the longest time. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and I never switched. And then I, I opened my blog on Zanga and just came up with that. And then the the rest is you know still here. So, only uh, only since you mentioned gaming, what do you uh, what are your what are your gaming tastes? What do you what do you like to play? Or when, uh, when you don't have kids in, in class? Uh, I play strategy games mostly these days. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, um, I mean, yeah. like, like... Uh, Crusader Kings is fun. Oh, okay. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Um, that, I, that, um... that, 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 that's always, that's always lots of fun to be had, you know, and then, and then, and then you can say stuff like, you know, I just murdered my wife and my kids <laughs> and, then, and then found a new one, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, I'm an, I'm an old school Starcraft guy. I like, I like real time strategy stuff. Wow. That's um, but, um, Starcraft. Yeah. Well, real time strategy is yeah. kind of a dead genre though. I mean, uh, I don't know. It goes, only, it goes back and forth, I guess. The only, the only one recently that I've played for real is, uh, the Abelians. Uh, that's, that's okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a zombie game. I don't know what it was. Uh, yeah, Starcraft just uh, just just hooked me back in the late back in the late '90s. Spent a lot of time playing it. I used to coordinate and do uh, esports events and bars where people could sit in a Jeez. bar and, and drink and like watch like Starcraft like live on the TV screens and stuff like that. Oh yeah. yeah I gotta gosh. admit, um, the the tea community <laughs> the tea community is a much 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 nicer community than um, than <laughs> esports. Um, we'll just we'll put it as, put it as simply as that. I noticed in your. Um, that's you're, not very hard. <laughs> no, it's it's not. But um, that kind of segues into you know your the conversation or the uh, I hadn't um, read the the blog where you talked about um, like this idea of the constant tea meeting. You know, it was just like this. Uh, you mentioned that recently, and I thought that was really interesting because that's something that we try to um, uh, try to provide for our our customers through like you know social media and stuff. Just this idea that they're I, I really feel like I'm having tea with them, and you know, in a, in a COVID type situation, you know, like we're not really able to have tea in person we usually have like you know tea tastings like once a week or something like that um and i found that um the zoom and social media and stuff has actually really kind of helped to, to make this make a feeling like i'm actually like running a tea shop even if it's just virtual i can have people come in and yeah that's true and, and have tea and stuff like that and it feels like i'm making tea for them um let's see all right so lama's written down i've written down some questions she's done a pretty good uh pretty good job on some of these questions um opinion on oh uh, opinions uh, opinions on huang pian why waste your time <laughs> well what if what, what if you what if you want to save your uh save your budget or is it not even not even not even worth it from that uh from that perspective 
if you want to save your budget, uh, spend it on spend it on some regular cheap tai or something. I don't know. All right. uh, there you go. Why 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 buy Huang Pian? Uh, basically, someone's trash. Uh, it's, it's not. <laughs> it's not. It's not going to age that well. Um, it's going to be kind of bland. Um, I mean, if you like the taste, go for it. But yeah. you know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend going out of your way to buy it. Uh, John's second question: uh, Do you believe the characteristics of somewhere like uh, Guofeng Jai are notable, or are the differences explained away by variables other than terroir? There's a big question for you. Just variations in local I, processing. Yep. I don't know because I can't. Um, this gets tricky, right? Because yeah. on on some level, it depends on whether you trust your vendor. And unless you spend a whole ton of time in Yunnan, in the mountains, and you watch them pick it, and then you watch them make it, and then you try those exact teas that's been picked and made, it is not clear what you're actually getting is definitely guafeng chai, 100% unadulterated guafeng chai. Like I was, well, we were talking last week, um, you know, in a bag of 10, 15 kilos, if someone mixes a kilo in or something else, that's from a nearby village, that's yeah. a lot cheaper. Yeah, it's very hard to figure it out. True. Um, like, like, so, and someone who is smart uh, wouldn't pick somewhere that's completely different that would become very obvious. You know, they will use right. something that's similar enough that you just wouldn't know dilutes your tea without really being able to be picked out very easily. And if they do it in a low enough volume, you know, they can goose their profit margin by quite sure. a bit without you noticing. And so that's, that's the real problem. So, so with something like, so when you talk about village specific yeah. uh, taste like that, uh, as, at least as an end consumer, I, I worry we spend too much time worrying about these kind of names and labels and it doesn't, it doesn't really mean that much at the end of the day. Yeah, that's something we, we also try to communicate that to our, our customers. You know, like the first year, you know, like, uh, you know, we actually purchased, you know, productions and stuff direct from, you know, farmers in a handful of villages and mountains and sold it as, you know, like a labeled sample set, this mountain, this mountain, this mountain. Mm -hmm. And some of the original feedback we got was just like, well, clearly you didn't get this from there because it doesn't taste like what I know that mountain tastes like. And I'm like, I was literally there but this this there's this idea of this like perception of you know a, a village or an area gets a specific perception in the west like this tea has to taste like that because it came from there and if you actually go there and find five teas that aren't from there we had trouble selling those teas as teas from those areas because they didn't meet meet the expectations that somebody had of what that tea should taste like and i thought oh and I and, thought, yeah. and and i mean these places are big, man. They're, they're not tiny, right? Um, right, right. Like when you say Gua Feng Dai, uh, sure, it's a village, so it sounds like a tiny place. But, you know, you're actually hiking two hours up the mountain, some slope somewhere uh, into the woods uh, to get to this guy's patch of tea trees right. that are actually four hours hike from the other guy's patch of tea tree on the other side of the mountain. Yeah. You know, it's still Gua Feng Dai, then that's what they're going to tell you. Yeah. Um, but if they face different sides of the of the hill, uh, if they have different kinds of slope or whatever, you know, you can get very different taste. Um, I mean, you see that with wine, uh, appellations can change just literally like across the road, uh, yeah. especially at the at the higher price appellations that are really small. You know, this one has like a sandy kind of soil, or that one has like a rocky soil, and you know, changes the taste of the wine and I think tea, if you get down to that kind of small level of, of, of microclimate or farm condition or whatever, yeah. it's going to be different. And it also, of course, depends on processing, right? So um, how you process your tea changes how it tastes on your end significantly. Right. So, true, true. Um, so, you know, the same raw leaves made by two different people uh, will taste different. Yeah, um, we did that our first year. Even if they're the exact same batch. Yeah, our so, first year in, yeah. in Bulong, Bulong Town, we had um, one one tea farmer and his um, predict, pred, uh, his uh, uh, picking and production. Um, half of it um, uh, 
the adults had processed and the other half the kids processed. And so we actually <laughs> why would we, you do that? We sold it. Well, you know, like you got they got to bring the. I mean, it, it was just true, it was just true. what they were you doing. Gotta, you know, you got yeah, you got to yeah, teach yeah. the young generation. Um, true. And so true. we sold it as you know like a elder and younger cakes and things like that. And you could totally totally taste a totally taste a difference just in how it was processed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, micro shrimp, micro shrimp wanted to know about, uh, the popularity of Western facing vendors in China. Is, does anybody in China care about Western vendors? What? No. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's, that's it. That's it. It is, it is a little funny though. I will occasionally, I'll get an interesting, um, uh, uh like a, like a WeChat message from some farmer that we work at. And he's like, Hey, I went to like some, you know, like Pu'er, uh, convention or something like that. And look at this. And he'll take a picture of like some screenshot <laughs> And then it's like, it's like a picture of me. And he's just like, I think this is you and you're in their slideshow. And I'm like, why am I in their slideshow? And then it just, I just think it's uh, I think it's, I think it's pretty funny. So, well, I mean, yeah. uh, uh, China is, uh, China and for a lot of people in the villages, uh, seeing a foreigner is still a big deal. Sure. Uh, sure. especially in the mountains. Sure. Um, so there is a certain, I wouldn't say cachet, but you know, there's a certain, uh, difference in how they treat you, right? Um, yeah, yeah. And and it's funny because I'm I'm, I'm Chinese, but yeah. you know, when I go to China, when I hang out in the tea markets, this happens the most in tea markets. Uh, when I when I'm sitting there drinking tea with some random guys, so usually guys, some women too, um, I, I would almost always get this: "Oh, you're not from China, are you?" <laughs> and like, uh, I I'm never identified as Chinese in China itself, especially Interesting. in tea markets. And they treat you kind of differently um, sure. as a result. Uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, but Western tea, uh, there, there's more, there's more recognition now. There's more recognition now among sort of people in the in the trade that there are lots of foreigners traveling to China who and there's work a market. Yeah, I think that, I think that's that what there's they're... a market out there, yeah, and they're dimly becoming aware of it, but they have no access to it, right? Yeah. So right and. and 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 foreigners who press stuff don't really have a market in China um, yeah. because the market in China is very different. Um, uh, it's it's in some ways much more stratified. Yeah. Um, and uh, they have their own circles, and foreign vendors won't break into those kind of circles. It's just it's not worth your time, really. Um, I mean, maybe someone who lives in China can do a little bit more of that but i don't see why they would yeah no we don't we don't even bother marketing our teas to to people in china because i mean i'm I, I'm, yeah. I'm an american and I'm, I'm marketing to people who are like me that's that's it i, I want to find the people who are like me because that's those are the people that i understand um you mentioned um, um mostly men in tea shops so i'll just jump into the question that uh, marco's got right here and I'll, 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 t I'll talk about it first for a sec. He, he wanted to know why Pu'er is so male dominated. And we've definitely, definitely seen, definitely seen that um, is, you know, like there, most tea shops are actually ran by both. You know, you got the, you got, you got the woman and the man, the man's always sitting there uh, brewing tea. Um, uh, in my experience, I think there's like a level of uh, a machismo that goes along with like having, uh, owning a tea shop. You're kind of like in, you're kind of like in a club. Um, sometimes I find it a little overbearing and, you know, we've actually, will sometimes wait until the, until like the man boss like leaves and then we'll talk to the woman and tell her exactly what we want. Cause I'll be like, I'll explain something like, this is the type of tea we're looking for. Do you have that? He's like, no, 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 no. You don't want that. This is what you want. And I'm like, well, really it's, it's not. And then, you know, once he leaves, then we can tell her and she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't worry. I'll take, I'll take care of you. Um, yeah, yeah, your, yeah. your, your thoughts on, um, masculinity in the, the poor market. Um, that's an interesting question. Uh, so, so uh, <clears throat> I think it's partly a function, also, especially with poor, of um, of the kind of culture that the aficionados are living in. Um, there is okay. this element of um, I don't know, dudes sitting around uh, comparing what they've got. Okay, let's just let's just put it that way. Sure. Exactly. And it happens with cigars, it happens with wine or whiskey yeah. or whatever. And I think poor sort of falls into that category. Um, and so, for rich Chinese businessmen who've got more money than they know what to do with, uh, 
telling everyone that I've got this fancy ass tea that I got from this mountain through some legit, totally not, you know, questionable sources, yeah. you know, is, is, is a thing, right? And you want to show off, right? Um, sure. You want to show off your, your teapot that you bought from auction. You want to show off the tea that you got from whatever. Um, and, and like you said, there's that machismo sort of that comes with that. And, and you do that either in tea shops or uh, better yet, you know, if you are sufficiently wealthy, you will have your own tea den that you have or rented out somewhere. The and, other thing uh, I like to see is like uh, Mung Hai, Mung Hai spring break. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a party and it is, it is a, it is a male dominated party and they, 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 they leave their wives to run a tea shop and like they come down there and they know for a month they can literally do whatever they want. And it gets, mm-hmm. it gets nuts. Um, uh, another, there's so many of these, there's so many of these, uh, uh private pressing sort of tea shops that are actually owned and run or not run owned by people who actually have real businesses. Yeah. in other industries yeah so like if you go to places like Dongguan, right there, there, there's a tea market there and the tea shops there are basically all run by these all owned by these guys who actually have a real factory in Dongguan making like plastic you know christmas trees or something yeah and uh but you know they this is their hobby and this is where they like to bring their friends and you know after some tea they'll start drinking mao tai or whatever and yeah and so there's that but but this goes away a bit if you go to places like uh, Fujian. Okay. So when you go to like Fujian and you go to oolong producing areas, uh, I think the culture there is a bit different. Um, and a lot of these shops and a lot of these operations are run by women. Yeah. Uh, on the production side. Uh, and uh, so, and you know, this goes a bit back to the traditional sort of division of labor too, right? Of, of who's making tea. Uh, tea making is a somewhat labor intensive process. So the women do the picking, um, but then they have to tend to the kids and cook and stuff. And then the guys do the heavy lifting, uh, which is including rolling the tea, which takes quite a bit of energy before you have machines doing your work for you. Yes. Yeah, uh, and, and, and hauling the teas back and yeah. forth. It's a lot of strength. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so there was a division of labor that's sort of inherently built into the industry. Yeah. Uh, but you know the women are very much part of it too, and you, you see plenty of women in the business. Uh, but they, yeah, they are yeah. a little less visible. Yeah. Yeah. People don't realize how heavy tea is. Like, I mean, a hundred kilos, a hundred kilos of tea weighs the same 100 as a hundred kilos, kilos of gold. A hundred kilos yeah, is a hundred exactly. kilos, and I. Exactly. That's that's my job. I'm the I am I'm the puer mule. I'm the tea mule. I'm the one who takes it out of the car and up the three flights of stairs and down. It's just like it's yeah, it's a lot of carrying. Um, last, last note about uh, uh, women in, in the puer industry, and then we'll jump into a, a question about blogging. Um, I, I absolutely prefer to work with, with women in the puer industry because, especially women who run their own shops, um, because if, if they've gotten successful in a male dominated industry, they know their shit. Like they yeah. really, oh, yeah. really know their shit, and they don't have as much. They don't have as much bravado to go with it. They don't have yep. as much to, to you know, like the the men's club to play around and brag and stuff. Like they'll tell you how yep. much it costs. They'll tell you what it is. Like they'll be more honest about it. And so I, you know, like a hundred percent of the time, much rather work with a a female a female pr- producer or a female shop owner because um, it, it's just it's just a better product. I get yeah, guys just lie to me all the time over there. Um, <laughs> well, not just yeah. lie. I mean, uh, uh, they 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 just want to show off. Well, and... yeah, and they also want to sell me what they want to sell me, and I'm like, this isn't what yeah, I want. Yeah, I yeah. want to buy. I want to they... buy this, and they're like, you Americans yeah. don't know what you want. I'm going to tell you what yeah. you need to buy, and I'm like, I don't yeah. want to buy that. Um, it's not just Americans though; they do that with yeah. Chinese too. Uh, okay, all right. Well, maybe that's... a little a little more subtly. Yeah. That's good to know. Um, so uh, a T for me, please. We actually have a couple bloggers in here. We've got Lazy Literatus. We've got Oolong Owl. We've got a T for me, please. They're all oh, in yeah. here. They are all uh, acting, active bloggers. Um, T for me, please says Marshall N as one of the uh, oldest continuously running T bloggers. What keeps you motivated to still write after all these years, even if it is uh, less frequently? Uh, I don't know. I, I don't write nearly as often as you do. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, I, as I said, I, I'm a historian, so I actually have a current uh, a research project on, on the history of tea in Taiwan. So, you know, that helps keeps things going. But 
generally, I only really write if I have something new to say these days because I don't want to reheat old topics that I've already talked about. Makes that's sense. What, that's what the blog is there for, right? Yep. It, it exists and you can go find it um, if I've talked about it before. But you yeah. know, if I find something new or something interesting, I'll talk about it. Uh, especially if it's something that I think people might not pick up on like yeah. like this i have a recent post about taobao shutting down some right. second hand sellers that's big yeah news. and yeah and i was like i was kind of like wait what, what what's going on where, where did all these teas go um because you used to be able to find pretty cheap like da yi and stuff like that on taobao pretty easily and they all disappeared one day i was like what what happened and so i asked one of these guys who i bought them from and he's like yeah the uh, taobao basically shut us down and that's, so he has all this. He has all these other stuff that's listed. He can still sell tea on yeah. Taobao, just not Da Yi. Yeah, I mean that's. Um, I mean, yeah. for, for people who might not know, I mean that's. Um, that's that's big. I'm trying to. I'm trying to figure out like what what that in, kills in, a lot of business. In I was trying to figure out what like an equivalent equivalency in like the Western market would be. I mean, it would be like somebody trying to sell something on eBay, and then like some company coming in and be like, "Oh yeah, by the way, like nobody on eBay can ever sell something that's from our company." It's just like not just eBay, Amazon. Yeah. It's yeah. like it's like right. it's like if it's like if you know some some whiskey company says nobody else can sell this whiskey except us, you know, or something like that. Yeah. And, and for no reason, right? It's not like he's selling fakes. Right. Um, right. But yeah. I, think the, I think the justification is that, oh, you don't know if this is a fake. I think that's gotcha. the excuse that was used. Um, but he was pretty vague about it. And I didn't. I can I didn't see, yeah, that makes uh, I, I can yeah. see. I can see why or I can see the conversation there are lots that of fakes. was having is would be just yeah. to stop the stop the fake thing. But um, and there are that's a lot a pretty of fakes. Big, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, you're right. Um, let's, it, somebody wanted to know how long you think Pu'er tea can actually be aged for. Is there, a, is there a ceiling? Is there a maximum limit? Longer than you'll be alive, probably. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I've had teas that are 70, 80 years. They are still good. Is there, um, is there, is there a, a, a window when they kind of reach a, a peak where they might really not do much more? Is there a big difference between 70 I, and 80-year-old no, tea? That, or? That depends a lot on how it was stored, I think. Okay. So, uh, so a few years ago, uh, it's on my blog somewhere. Uh, I have a friend whose parents lived in New York's Chinatown. And her dad was a customs official in Yunnan or something like that. And they found in the basement or something like that, uh, two cakes of tea. One was a whole cake and another one was like a half drunk you know, thing. Uh, and these are pre-1945 poor. Okay? Yeah. Kind of a no-name, not, not a very famous brand or anything. The tea was still excellent. And this was, at that point, at least 70 plus years old. Nonchalantly stored uh, in New York. Uh, it's perfectly fine. And it's, it's hmm. pretty good. Um, is it amazing? No. Uh, we ended up selling one of them uh, because they don't drink tea and the half right. cake they just kept i said you, should, you guys should just keep this half cake you right know, for your own for your own kibijibis or whatever and you know that that one cake sold for like half a million hong kong um something like that wow three four hundred thousand so you know that new york like storage 50, yeah 50 50k us uh something like that and you know it's it's good tea uh so yeah uh good tea stored decently or reasonably uh can keep for a long time yeah Somebody wants to know uh, suggestions on a good tea for uh, for hammering now. What do you uh, what are, what do you what are, what are your thoughts? Ooh, um, that depends entirely on what you're looking for. Um, it's true. I, I <sighs> well, I guess I, I guess I, you I, right now. What are, what are, what what would you what would you currently uh, what would you currently hammer? Well, it depends on your budget, right? Um, so, like, I had this thing recently. I had a Chen Sheng Hao from like 2006 or 2007. Okay. Um, some random cake they pressed back in the day. So, you know, 13 years old. They were selling on Taobao for like 250, 300 yuan. Wow. Okay. And I was like, why is it so cheap? You know, I was a little worried that it was a fake. For the Western so I bought a cake. that's like. 40 bucks or something like that. Yeah, that's like 40, 45 bucks. Um, I was like, is this fake? You know, it looks a little suspicious. It was a little too cheap to be good, to be true. I bought one, seems fine. Um, I might buy a few tons of it. I don't know, maybe. 
um, something like that. But well, uh, you know, well, if you go to buy it and it's if you go to buy it and it's all gone, it's because of the Chad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, Taobao Tao lottery is uh, is is real. Uh, uh, sometimes you find good stuff like that, but you know, uh, you also can end up with a lot of crap. So it really depends on what you're looking for. Um, do you have any experience with um, uh, adding humidity to storage? Have you ever done it, used any like the Bovita no. packs or anything like that? Any any no. any thoughts on that? Because that's pretty no. much one of the only ways the Westerners have to uh, reliably introduce humidity. No, I am not an expert in that. Do not ask me questions. I mean, you're you're, you're blessed I, with living in in Hong Kong, so yeah, you don't really don't have to worry it. about it. I don't know anything about adding humidity. If anything, I might have to take away humidity sometimes. But right, right. Adding right. is not the problem here. So, so you're talking to the wrong guy about that. Yeah. What's the strangest, the strangest tea that you enjoy drinking that might be defined as odd or strange? That's a question. Um, hmm, let me think. Strangest tea I enjoy drinking. There are some pretty funky aged oolongs that I enjoy, but uh, borderline just straight up moldy. Um, uh, but they, they're really sharp. Yeah. Like you can sort of almost taste the mold. Um, but, but they can be good and, uh, in the right circumstances. Uh, so yeah, they are those. Um, okay. When you really want that sort of pitch black you know, moldy tea experience. It's, 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 it, it, it works, um, even if it's a little questionable. <laughs> Probably like the most like questionable one. I, mean, I know they weren't asking me that question, but I'm just going to jump in and answer it. Uh, just because you mentioned, you know, like older borderline questionable moldy teas. Um, had this just really great, like early 2000s um, uh, Jingmai Mao Cha that was stored in Jingmai, just in somebody's rafters. We actually sold it on the site as like single session stuff, but I had to, I had to, I had to clean the tea. I mean, there was just, you know, cobwebs on it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, man, the, tea, the tea was just so good. It was just so good. And it was, um, but it was, it was right on that. It was right on that, right on that line. I mean, it, it brewed up like black as ink and it, and, oh my God, it was just so good. So good. But um yeah, um, I, I just noticed a question in chat. Uh, yeah. Why can I not find Hong Kong stores so easily? I want to ask, I want to talk about that. So um, uh, the thing with Hong Kong store tea uh, is that it's gotten a bad rep over the years uh, because I think there are lots of people who talk it down. And the Modi taste is also a little bit of an acquired taste, right? So, you know, your first time trying some really dank tea, uh, you, it, it can be it can be a little overwhelming, um, and the thing with Su is that it's hit by the double whammy of Su not being that popular with um, with the sort of tea lover crowd, if we can call it that. Like people tend to gravitate to Shunta um, because it's more exciting. It's 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 you know more aging potential, and there's also more money potential too. Uh, uh, the the at least in the early 2000s, the dream was buying a cake of, you know, that's, that cost 20 bucks. And then, you know, uh, 10 years later, it would turn into 2000 bucks or something like that. Yeah. I mean, that, that, was, that was the dream people were living with back in the day. As it turns out, uh, you can now find 2006, 2017 for less than a new cake would cost right. on the market that are actually sometimes better than what new cakes are uh, with 15 years of age on it. So um, the, the value proposition of this thing is kind of out of whack. And as a reason of that, uh, because of all that, like Su, especially traditionally store Su, uh, is not something that most people would carry. And if you want good examples of it, you have to come to Hong Kong to buy them. Right. Because there are people in Guangzhou who try to mimic a Hong Kong storage, but Guangzhou's climate is just different enough so that the stuff, at least the ones I've tried, uh, doesn't come out quite the same. Um, some of them are reasonably decent, uh, and some of them are really, really dank. Um, and uh, so uh, I think you just need to find people who are willing to do that. I don't know. Uh, I think there are a couple of people who, who do travel to Hong Kong frequently enough. You know, tell them to go stock that stuff and find good examples of it. Uh, but they're not going to be cheap because yeah. local taste in Hong Kong for the local consumer, uh, actually many of them still prefer Su Tang 
they still prefer shou tea. Interesting. So uh, a lot of these shops that sell both, especially the old style one, that do them in cellar storage, uh, would actually sell for more than the sheng tao. Which means that for a guy to then buy it from them and resell it to you on the internet, he'll have yeah. to charge more. Yeah. And that's a tough, that's a tough sell yeah. uh, on, on the internet. So we, I think that's why you don't see that many of them. We found, we found one, we found a, Kun, uh, a shop in Kunming, uh, a guy, he uh, uh, claims he also has a shop in, um, um, in, in, in Hong Kong as well, or at least has some, some storage in Hong Kong. He had some um, mid nineties uh, shoe cha uh, loose, um, or that was uh, so he claimed. And it, it, it was probably one of the best show pour I've ever had. It was just so good. Like it just, it just hit everything like 10 of 10 of 10 on like every single metric that I could possibly go at. I mean, it was ridiculously expensive. You know, we bought, bought like a, a kilo of it to, you know, just kind of break out into, you know, single session experiences for people, which is where we kind of just take eight grams and, you know, like sell it as, as, mm -hmm. as, as it is. Um, and it just made me violently ill. But I absolutely loved it. I, I had, I had Wait, to. Wait, violently had, ill. Oh, I got so sick. I got. What I got, do you do? I got so sick from it. Um, I don't know. And like, like I, I waited. Well, how was it making you sick? Um, like I actually caught a cold. Like I could specifically feel myself getting worse and worse and worse. Like after the session that I had with it, and I waited. I waited a week and had another session with it, and it just immediately started doing the exact same reaction again. And at that point Weird. in time, I'm like, you know what? I, I can't, I can't sell this tea. Like as good as it is, as much as I absolutely enjoy, enjoy drinking this tea, just, I, I, I couldn't, I don't know. I don't know. Who knows? Um, so, um, no, the guy, uh, I, the guy, uh, the guy bought it back from us. I was just like, Hey man, I'm really oh, sorry. Okay. Like, and so he was, he was, I mean, he was, he was an honest guy. I mean, he's like, yeah, dude, I don't totally get it. So he, he bought the, uh, he bought the tea back from us. Um, uh, I don't know. So good. I still think about that tea. I don't know what it was. It, um, it, it's probably been through yeah. wet storage. Yeah. Right, but the traditional storage. That, that's that's going to be my guess. Um, let's see. Uh, what were we? Is anybody else in a? Oh, somebody wanted to know like your uh, preferred preferred clay for. Well, they asked for your preferred clay for ripe or show pour, but if you don't really like drinking a lot of ripe or show pour, you probably don't um, have dedicated uh, dedicated clay. Um, yeah, I think that's that's the correct answer. What are your thoughts on uh, on others? Uh, silver, Genjon, any of the other. Uh, uh, I don't use any of the other stuff. I have a, I have a couple of silver teapots, uh, yeah. but uh, silver is only good for very specific circumstances. Uh, silver, for example, makes a tea kind of sweet yeah. and really bright and is very poorly suited for pour for that reason, because it, it just doesn't mix well. With I think it might work with green teas. Uh, yeah. It will work with lighter oolongs. Um, but I wouldn't use silver for poor. Yeah, I found I like it depends. It depends on the aged. Uh, it depends on the poor. We actually, I mean, we sell silver silver cups on the 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 site. I find that silver a silver cup does the exact same thing as a, a silver kettle in my correct in my my experience. Um, uh, it depends. It depends on the tea. Yeah, I find it has a way of. Uh, enhancing the enhancing some characteristics of the tea if the tea has like some certain unique things that can kind of stretch them a little taller or something i don't know i kind of look at it like a mm -hmm. like a sine wave or something like that it kind of just kind of like makes it a little bit taller but it um um yeah it depends on the it depends on the tea but it is it is really interesting how that um can actually work um lazy literatus was curious about the uh puer bubble the um uh what 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 your thoughts if there is going to be another puer bubble or is it we're we stretching it out or um what are your thoughts? Poor bubble. Well, so if we go into a little bit of history of this, right? Uh, so it popped once in like 2000, early 2007. So in mid to late 2006, there was a pretty big bubble at the time anyway yep. uh, for uh, Taiyi and Xiaoguan and things like that. Uh, and basically price was going up like week by week. It was, it was pretty ridiculous. And I remember, you know, being in Beijing at the time and, you know, visiting the tea markets every week and, you know, you can sort of see that activity. It was, it was buzzing and, uh, people were making money. Um, but then in early 2007, it kind of popped and, uh, a lot of tea sort of crashed through the floorboards. 
uh, some never recovered. Yeah. Uh, some some have been in the doldrums ever since, and I think Xiaoguan is one of them. It, it, a lot of this, like people were buying like those jiaji jiaji tuo for like ridiculous amounts of money. I mean, that, that was never going to go anywhere because there's they produce so much of it. Um, there yeah. was just no way it, it would it would keep up. Uh, but some of the rarer sort of makes the the small pressings from Xiaoguan for uh, from Daiyi for example. Uh, are still expensive. They're still expensive now, uh, because of a limited supply and perceived value. Uh, I, I I don't think. Well, now if if they're not allowing anybody to sell it on the secondary markets online, that's probably not going to well, make it cheaper. You, you can you can still yeah you can still go to exactly. I think I think this may actually uh, create opportunities for people who have physical access to T markets um, to uh, undercut. Uh, uh, online sellers, uh, at least on Taobao, right? So previously, you know, if you're enterprising enough, you can actually, at least on the Western, on the sort of Western facing side of the internet. Uh, previously, if you were enterprising enough, you learn how to use Taobao and you can find some agent to buy stuff for you. And yeah. you have access to basically the same teas that these Taobao resellers basically can. But now uh, the guy sitting in Guangzhou has access to tea that you'll never find, at least not at the prices that you can find in that. Sure. And so they can be a good source of cheaper tea, uh, but they might also raise prices as a result. So you know, um, what will happen? I don't know. But uh, but but uh, I, I don't think I, I I don't think the price bubble has really gone away, and I don't think it's a bubble anymore for the top end. Mm. So we're talking about the really sort of hundreds of years old Gu Su or whatever, uh, I don't think those are ever going to come back down uh, in terms of price because the supply is limited I and the number that. of people chasing it is large enough. Yeah. Uh, so I don't think those will ever come down again. Uh, so and speaking I of think factory tea, prices are fairly reasonable. Speaking of, uh, speaking of Guangzhou, um, Zioxio mentioned um, flooding in tea markets a couple of years ago. Um, mm -hmm. Did you notice an effect on like the overall market for teas based on how much was actually lost there did you see that trick i don't i don't else? i don't i don't go to guangzhou very much um, well i mean even i mean you, you you know if it was yeah. it was supposedly like significant amounts of you know material was it's a significant lost. amount of tea yeah. Um, yeah i was just wondering or i guess the oxel was wondering if you had seen that have a ripple effect anywhere else i could imagine it possibly but um i don't think so you don't think so okay honestly there's so much stock there is a lot of that's tea sitting out there in yeah. someone's warehouse here or there. Yeah. There are people who have literal tons and tons of tea. Yeah. They, they, they used to, they still do. I mean, they buy houses just yeah. to store tea. Um, yeah, we've and, seen, yeah, uh, we've seen those, yeah. And it's, it's double speculation because, you know, they're both betting on the real estate and betting on the tea. So, um, so there, there's, for a lot of the more regular stuff, there's a, basically a limitless supply, supply out there. Yeah. And for Dai, for example, since that's sort of the benchmark, right? Um, from production to production, yes, there are differences. Yes, they do taste a bit different. But I'm not sure if the differences are really enough to justify sometimes the two, three, four times difference in price. So you got to try them and see what you're willing to pay and, and what you like. But so somebody had a question um, related to your thoughts on aging, aging Iwu. Is that... Um, is, is the uh, is the issues with ease, aging iwu based on um, um, uh, processing or just uh, the the actual iwu terroir? Maybe we already answered that. I'm not sure. I, I think it might have to do with. Uh, it's actually a combination of all all of the above. Um, so, some place that over harvest their tea, the tea is going to come out weaker. Yeah. So a farmer that picks their tea six, seven times a year is going to have tea that's weaker than the guy who only picks it twice a year. Right. Um, and you can sort of tell from drinking it, uh, but it, it may not always be obvious when you first buy it, right? especially if you're buying it and you're not that experienced. Um, and yeah, it can do with processing. It can do with also what we talked about earlier, the single origin just was... The, the simple nature of a single source tea right. um, blends can be more interesting as a result. So, right. so I think it has to do with all those factors and of course how you store it. And that's the other thing about tea is that 
when you buy tea to store, you take on the storage risk, right? And yeah. All the crap that happens to your tea uh, while you're storing it, it's your fault. It's your fault. You pay the price for it. Yep. Um, and unlike something like wine, which comes in a <clears throat> basically a protective bottle sure. where, you know, as long as you don't screw up the temperature and humidity, you're probably okay. Uh, there are so many things you can, that can go wrong with tea storage. Yeah, uh, I know. It's stress, so it stresses me out. <laughs> it's, 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 oh. it's, a, it's a high risk. And you, yeah. you know, when you buy HT, you're basically paying that risk premium. So I actually right. would suggest there's no particular reason to chase teas that I just made. Um, if you can find stuff that's been aged for a few years for a slightly more expensive price, it might be worth that. Yeah. Uh, and once it gets over the initial hump, you will have a better sense of if the tea is good or not. From a, um, from it's a blending, harder to judge new tea. It's yeah, no, I know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I know what you mean for, for us from a, sorry, from a, this is bad for your business, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's all good, man. That's all your, uh, um, we just, we're just happy to have you. <laughs> talking and telling us telling us what you uh telling us what your thoughts are and stuff and customers uh customers yeah. are is uh everybody in the chat is as well um for me from a, a blending perspective i i i wanted to feel like like i was contributing you know like like i myself was actually adding something to the process you know so i've got um you know you got the farmers who are picking it and you know like doing the processing and things like that and you've got a whole bunch of different things that are actually working together to create the final product. And um, uh, I, I, I still, I still kind of, uh, I still in, I guess not even kind of, but in a large way, I consider um, our products um, in artistic production. You know, like I, I, I feel that way myself. I like to, I like to add um, my personal artistic impression on that. I, I consider the blends part of, um, part of my art. Honestly, and uh, I like to uh, I like to try to work to uh, I like to work to create something. I like to you know be able to to take some things from from this area that tastes like this and this area from this, and I, I like to try to bring them together. And the hope is that I'm going to create something that's you know greater than the sum of the parts. I mean that's 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 part of the part of the idea and part of the the thing that makes me um, passionate about it is uh, I feel I feel I want to be able to uh, to contribute something something more to the tea than just saying like I bought this tea from here you know buy it drink it I want it. so. Um, and maybe maybe that comes into like uh, crimson lotus tea has a house style. Uh, I'm not sure. Sure, they they all do. Yeah, you all end up having a house style. Um, a friend of mine here who presses tea, who's a woman by the yeah. way, who who goes out every year and at least until a few years ago when prices got too high and she felt it wasn't worth it anymore. They only press one cake a year, um, and it's a blend. Um, and it's mostly EU area stuff. But you know, if you ask her exactly where it's from, she won't tell you. Um, and, uh, it's, it's, it's always going to be a blend and, you know, you make yeah. it or leave it, you know, uh, and, and I think there's nothing wrong with that. Um, and they age well, and she actually sticks her tea in Fujian for, of all places, uh, to, to age because it, it ages better than say Kunming. Um, and it's cheaper than Hong Kong. Hong Kong, one of the problems with Hong Kong is, uh, real estate is too expensive. So yeah. most people no longer store their, even the old tea houses in Hong Kong no longer store all their tea here because it's, it's too costly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's the same with, same with Seattle. I mean, I can't, I can't buy a whole house in Seattle just to, just to store tea. So, I mean, we've, we have a room, but um, we keep the oh, majority you, of it. You, yeah. You could probably buy a house in like, you know, rural Washington, somewhere on the east side of the state. And sure. Probably be cheap enough. But, and we, but you then, know, that's something that we, yeah. that we think about. I mean, it's, you know, since we've built our business being, you know, like online, I could be our business. I could, we could live anywhere. There's a post office, you know, as long as I can sure. put things in boxes and mail it out. And so we, we, we think about that sometimes. I don't know. Crimson Lotus team may, yeah. uh, may pick up and move, uh, move somewhere else. But I certainly like the, um, I like the Pacific Northwest because like it, people just get tea here. Uh, I don't know why, you know, they just, it doesn't, it, it doesn't matter. Like I can, I can meet anybody here and they're almost always interested. And maybe it's cause from, you know, comes from, you know, like a, a passionate, like connoisseur's coffee background or something like that. But sure, yeah, sure, I think, sure. I think if I was in um, some other areas, it may be a little bit more of a, more of a hard sell. So um, like if, this, if, that, if that makes sense. Um, you got some more questions over there for me, Lemma? We'll see. Or did you see any questions in, in chat that jumped out at you, Lawrence? No, I haven't been keeping my eyes uh, too closely. Uh... Right. Are you, uh, a question. So yeah, go ahead. 
what's an example of a tea you bought 15 years ago? Which tea <laughs> you mistake? Oh, there are lots of those. Um, where do we start? Um, back then, it was the Wild West, right? So uh, lots of teas are mistakes, uh, either because they are weird in some ways, bad material, or bad processing. Uh, there are too many to name, really. Yeah. Um, are you still uh, you're still good for time? We've been we've been going at this for for two hours. Uh, sure. Do we have anything more to talk about, or should um, we call it a day? We could uh, we could we could call it a day. Let me look at this last little uh, little list of questions. See if there's uh, anything. What do you think about border material being passed off as a uh, Yunnan material, Lao, Burma, yeah. Vietnam? You know, I mean. Technically, it doesn't have, fall into the definition, right? Because it's not inside of the geographical region. But you know, like you know, if 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 if, if that tree is fifty feet over there, and you know, like, yeah, um, I haven't had enough to know for sure. I think that's the only way I can answer this properly, because um, because, like you said, if it's fifty feet over and they just walked over and picked it, and it yeah. tells you it's from there, whatever, you're not gonna know. Um, and functionally, I don't think it will make that much of a difference. And, and I, I've had some like Laos tea, for example, but um, the quality really varies. So yeah. um, it, I don't know. Um, yeah. the, 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 the traditional, traditionally, when people say border tea, uh, they're talking about very specific productions from like the 80s or earlier uh, made in places like Thailand. Yeah. And those, or oh, Vietnam, and those are obviously different yeah. from what we would consider to be poor. Um, they taste kind of similar, but, you know, uh, they have all been through traditional Hong Kong storage. So they all have that sort of taste. Um, and like Vietnam tea, Vietnam tea, you can kind of pick out just by looking at it. Uh, it's, it's really obvious that the, the, the shapes are different. Um, and they have a certain kind of taste to it. It's all right. Do you, do you like, think shape? Do you like Liu Bao? <laughs> do you think shape makes a difference in in aging? Because like traditionally, you could say like, oh well, you know, like all the best stuff was pressed into cakes. You know, like the crappy stuff. You know, like works all the way down to like some of the shapes where traditionally, like there was nothing good pressed into bricks. You know, but but yeah. now, I mean, I can press anything into bricks. I mean, I could press Lao Ban Zhang Gushu into into bricks. And so uh, right now, you can't really say that like shape is always bad but what do you think uh, shape as far oh, as like uh, aging goes when i was saying shape earlier i actually yeah. meant the shape of the leaves themselves gotcha uh, gotcha vietnam vietnam tea has these really long wiry sort of stems for example that, that are kind of distinctive um but yeah uh in terms of shape uh, the the old the old wisdom of you know cakes being the best uh, is, is was true during the factory era um yeah it's not it's not so true anymore uh, you can do whatever you want with it now. You can, people can press it into triangles if they feel like it. So, um, yeah, it's it's not. I don't think that's a real factor anymore. No. Do you think the difference? Uh, I don't. I don't like tours just because they're really annoying. Um, <laughs> and uh, like, I sent you Chang Tai and I sent you a tour. <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, well, no. I nailed it. <laughs> but I, but I think, I think, I think, I, I speak for everyone here. Tours yeah. are annoying, man. They yeah, they take they up space. Annoying. Um, they they are hard to break. Um. You make a mess every time you try to break them. You know, there's a there's a reason people don't really press tours anymore. As, uh, because they are pain. As somebody who stores a lot of tea, I really wish everything was pressed as bricks. I mean, because just from a pure yeah. poor storage, because it's so great um, space yeah. space wise on my shelves. You know, we've got a finite amount of uh, of poor tea storage real estate, <laughs> and um, cakes take up a decent amount of space. Tours take up more, but like bricks, so nice, just. <laughs> yeah, the the circle circle wastes a lot of space, man. But I mean, maybe 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 having a little extra air movement around there helps. Possibly, possibly, yes. possibly, yes. possibly, possibly. possibly. Yes, um, uh, that that's that's certainly a factor. Yeah. Cool. Um, I think. Um, one last question. Since oh, you're already nice. one last question. Um, uh, Micro shrimp. We're gonna let you have the last question. How has your approach to tea evolved since diving deep into it, and and what is your approach, and what is it like now? Good question. I drink tea a lot more casually now than I used to. Um, so, like ten years ago, I would drink tea like this every day, like sort of like what you're seeing now. 
I don't do that anymore. Um, partly because of kids. Uh, kids are the great equalizer. Um, <laughs> and 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 having Tiwe lying around when they're running around is is a fairly dangerous thing to do, um, but also because it's it's not you you learn how to sort of you learn what you like right and yeah. you start you start ignoring all the hype uh, because because you don't need it's not that you don't need it but it's it's you kind of know what you like and you sort of settle into what you like and you can sort of tune out all the noise. Uh, when you're new, you know, it's very tempting to chase all the new things right. and all the, well, all the cool guys are drinking um, <clears throat> and you can get sucked into that. It's, it's like, you know, um, it's like any other kind of hobby that involves consumption, wine, whiskey, whatever. Um, you, you, you're excited, you know, you're, you're still learning. You read about it from some authority somewhere, and you chase it. And you know, people who are vendors would would take advantage of that and sell you stuff that really isn't necessarily very good sometimes. Um, and then after a while, you drink enough, you kind of know your taste, and you sort of settle into what you like and what you don't like, and you realize that you get more efficient. That's bad. Yeah, and this is BS, and you know you pay less tuition, but you know you do have to pay that tuition to get there. Yeah, I think we're and the it, same it, way. Yeah, it takes experience. Yeah. Um, you know, there's even even you know, uh, we're in Yunnan. You know, you know, pre pre COVID or you know pandemic permitting, we're in Yunnan for just about three months usually, and um, that seems like a long time, but it's it's not. You no, know, and we've gotten very quick, yeah. we've gotten far far more efficient, you know, with like, okay, like, well, what villages can we actually like go to? You know, like which farmers can we actually like meet like in that in that 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 window? And you know, and the, the first time first year we had tons more time. I mean we weren't, you know, like doing half the stuff we're doing. And, you know, we could go, oh well let's go spend a week there. Let's go spend a week there. And you know, just uh, a lot more a lot more exploration and research base and now we've kind of like condensed it down it's just like okay well you know like i know i know we want this 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 and this you know like then let's you know like focus on that and i think even from like our tea tea drinking experience i don't drink the the same things for the same reasons you know even just eight years ago and so you probably oh and also uh, after a while you you gain it you gain enough experience you can sort of look at a tea and you kind of know what it's going to taste like um, I mean, speaking yeah. as a consumer, you yeah. know, especially for stuff that's kind of aged, uh, if you show me a cake and, you know, I look at it, I have, I sometimes have a faint idea of what it's going to be like without even brewing it. Right. And, and, you know, once you've drunk tea long enough, you just, you just kind of know you, you have, you have kind of that sense and yeah. you know whether to waste your time on that or not. <laughs> like even time in tea shop is, is valuable and I'm not, I'm going to, I'm sit here for two hours. I don't want to try stuff. I don't want to drink. Yeah. I'm, I'm never going to buy, you know? Well, we really, really appreciate you spending this, this time with us. It's a real, it's a real honor yeah. and a privilege. Um, it's been fun. Yeah. So hi chat. Uh, sorry. It didn't look uh, more intently at the chat. It's but, good. Uh, Lama, Lama, did a, not... Lama did a good job of uh, pulling out some of the, some of the interesting questions. And I think, I think people were uh, 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 patient, uh, patient enough. And I think yeah. um, people came into the chat at different points in time. Um, and I think you actually answered earlier a lot of the questions people had later. So if you guys want to uh, right. watch the uh, watch the whole thing again, I mean, YouTube's great. It's going to be up there recorded and ready to go as soon as I click uh, end stream, right. which is nice. Um, That's right. No, this was, um, this was, this was really great. And um, it was an honor and a privilege to, uh, to have tea with you. And I really appreciate you um, giving us, uh, giving us so much of your, uh, so much of your Sunday, Sunday morning. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Thank you guys. Right. Thanks everybody who joined in chat. Um, love See you all.